Understanding native speakers and fast English isn't about understanding the sounds of American English. It's about all the other things, linking, reductions. The more you study them, the more effortlessly you'll be able to speak fast English and understand native speakers. Today, we're going to do just that in 18 conversations and monologues. Here's the first one we'll study with the analysis we'll do together. Tom, what did you do today? Today I woke up and I went for a run and uh, then I just worked. So where do you run? I run in Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn. So what are you doing after this? After this, nothing. No plans? No plans. Should we get dinner? Yeah. Now let's do an in-depth analysis to study all these important parts. Linking, reductions, flap T's, stress, and so on. Tom, what did you do today? Today I woke up. Tom, what did you do today? Lots of interesting things happening here. I noticed, first of all, that I've dropped the T here. What did? What did? What did you do? I'm also noticing I'm getting more of a J sound here. Ju, ju, what did you, did you. So the D and the Y here are combining to make the J sound. So we have wa, di, ju, what did you, what did you, what did you. Tom, what did you do today? The other thing I notice is that the T here is really more of a flap sound, a D. Duda, duda, duda day. This is most definitely a schwa, so we're reducing this unstressed syllable to be the schwa. Today, today, do today, do today. Tom, what did you do today? Tom, what did you do today? Today. Today. Today, I woke up. Now here we have today three times. Always the first syllable is reduced to the schwa sound, but I'm noticing that these T's are all true T's and not flap T's. That's because they're beginning sentences, so we're not going to reduce that to a flap T. In the case up here, do today, it came, the T in today came between a vowel, do, the OO vowel, and the schwa sound, and that's why we made this a flap sound. But here we're beginning a sentence, so we're going to go ahead and give it the true T sound, though we will most definitely reduce to the schwa. Today. 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 Tom, what did you do today? Today. Today. Today I woke up. Everything was very connected there, and I know that when we have something ending in a vowel or diphthong sound and the next word beginning in a vowel or diphthong sound, that we want that to really glide together. Today I, today I, today I. And anytime we have a word that begins with a vowel, we want to say, hmm, does the word before end in a consonant sound? It does. It ends in the K consonant sound. Woke up, woke up. So to help us link, we can almost think of it as beginning the next word. Wo, cup, woke up. Today I woke up. Today. Today. Today I woke up and I went for a run. And I went for a run. Tom dropped the D here, connected this word and to I, and I, and I, and I. This was the schwa sound. So he's reduced and, and I, and I. And I went for a run, fura, fura. Tom reduced the vowel in the word for to the schwa, and we've connected these two function words together, fura, fura, fura. This is also a schwa, fura, fura, for a run, for a run. And I went for a run. Can you pick out the two stressed words here? Went, run. Those are the two words that have the most shape in the voice, the most length. And I went for a run. And I went for a run. Again, he's got the intonation going up here at the end because comma. He's giving us a list here. And there's more information about to come. Today I woke up and I went for a run and I went for a run and I went for a run. And uh, then I just worked. And um, now here Tom did pronounce the D. He linked it to the next word beginning with a vowel, which is just this thought word that we say when we're thinking. And, um, and, um, again, the intonation of the voice is going up at the end. And, um, signaling comma, not a period, more information coming. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, then it just worked. 
worked, worked. Then I just worked. Here finally we have the intonation of the voice going down at the end, so we know period, end of the sentence, end of the thought. Then I, he connected this ending consonant to the beginning vowel, the diphthong I, I, to smooth that out, then I, then I, then I just worked. Did you notice Tom dropped the T here? We did not get just worked, just worked. He didn't release it. This happens often when we have a word that ends in a cluster with a T, when the next word also begins with a consonant. In these cases often, the T will get dropped. I just worked. I just worked. I just worked. Do you notice that the ED ending here is pronounced as a T sound? That's because the sound before, the K, is unvoiced. So this ending will also be unvoiced. Worked. Worked. And I went for a run, and uh, then I just worked. And uh, then I just worked. And uh, then I just worked. So where do you run? So where do you run? Now this is a question, but did you notice the intonation went down at the end? Run. Run. That's because it's a question that cannot be answered with just yes or no. Yes, no questions go up in pitch at the end. All other questions tend to go down in pitch at the end. Where do you run? Do you hear the stressed words in that question? Where? Run. So where do you run? Longer words, more up-down shape of the voice. Where? Run. So where do you run? 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 I run in Fort Green Park. What do you hear as being the stressed syllables there? I run in Fort Green Park. 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 I hear da 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 da. Definitely I hear Fort Green and Park all being longer, all having that shape in the voice. I run in Fort Green Park. Also, I is a little bit more stressed than running. I, I, da da da, da da da. I running, I running, running, running. So those two words are really linked together because we have an ending consonant and a beginning vowel. Running, running, I running. I run in Fort Green Park. I run in Fort Green Park. I run in Fort Green Park. I run in Fort Green Park in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Brooklyn, a two syllable word. One of the syllables will be stressed. What do you hear as being stressed? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Definitely it's that first syllable. Brook. Brook. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. So what are you doing after this? So what are you doing after this? How was I able to say so many words quickly but still be clear? First of all, I'm dramatically reducing the word R to the schwa R sound, er, er. That means the T here is now coming between two vowel sounds, and I'm making that a flap T sound, which sounds like the D between vowels, water, water, water. Also, the word you is unstressed, so it's going to be in that same line, what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you? Very fast, quite flat, lower in volume. What are you doing? Now here we have a stressed word, do, doing, doing. What are you doing? Do you hear how the syllable do sticks out of that phrase more than anything else? What are you doing? What are you doing? After this, another stressed word here. So what are you doing after this? So what are you doing after this? So what are you doing after this? What are you doing after this? What are you doing after this? After this, nothing. Tom's speaking a little bit more slowly than I am here. After this, nothing. We have two two-syllable words here. Which syllable is stressed? Let's take first the word after. If you think you hear the first syllable as being stressed, you're right. Af, after, der, der, der. The second syllable, very low in pitch, flat and quick, after. What about the word nothing? Again, it's the first syllable. ING endings, even though this isn't an ING verb, will be unstressed. Nothing, na, na, nothing. After this, 
nothing. After this, nothing. After this, nothing. No plans. No plans. Nothing reduces in this phrase. I'm really hearing this as two different stressed words. They're both one syllable. No plans. 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 Should we get dinner? Yeah. Should we get dinner? One of the things I notice is I'm dropping the D sound. Should we? Should we? Should we get? Should we get? Should we get? That's helping me say this less important word even faster. Should we get dinner? Should we get dinner? Should we get dinner? Should we get dinner? I notice that the T here is a stop T. I don't release it. It's not get dinner. It's get, 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 get dinner, get dinner. Should we get dinner? Should we get dinner? Should we get dinner? Should we get dinner? Do you notice in this question, my voice does go up in pitch at the end? Dinner, dinner. That's because this is a yes, no question. Pitch goes up. Should we get dinner? Should we get dinner? Yeah. As you probably know, a more casual way to say yes. Should we get dinner? Yeah. Should we get dinner? Yeah. Here's the conversation again. You're going to see our markings on screen. You'll actually hear the conversation three times to help you really take in what you're seeing. Tom, what did you do today? Today I woke up and I went for a run and uh, then I just worked. So where do you run? I run in Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn. So what are you doing after this? After this, nothing. No plans. No plans. Should we get dinner? Yeah. Tom, what did you do today? Today I woke up and I went for a run and uh, then I just worked. So where do you run? I run in Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn. So what are you doing after this? After this, nothing. No plans. No plans. Should we get dinner? Yeah. Tom, what did you do today? Today I woke up and I went for a run and uh, then I just worked. So where do you run? I run in Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn. So what are you doing after this? After this, nothing. No plans. No plans. Should we get dinner? Yeah. That was Tom, my colleague and great friend. You're going to see some more conversations with him in this video. But first, another dear friend, Laura. We're grocery shopping. Just casual conversation between two friends. Let's see the conversation and then we'll study it. I just got my first weird look. But you know what, at the end of the day, it doesn't I matter. I know, at the end of the day, it's the students who matter. That's right. Okay, green beans. Ooh, cranberries, fresh. Oh yeah, oh, and I was hoping that we wouldn't have to buy a huge bag. How many do we need? And now for that analysis. I just got my first weird look. But you know what, at the end of the day, it doesn't I matter. I know, at the end of the day, it's the students who matter. That's right. Okay, green beans. Ooh, cranberries, fresh. Oh yeah, oh, and I was hoping that we wouldn't have to buy a huge bag. How many do we need? Now the analysis. I just got my first weird look. I just got my first weird look. The words that I hear being the most stressed there are just weird and look. They're a little bit longer. So I just got my first weird look. Let's talk about the pronunciations of T here. They're interesting. First, we have a stop T in got my. This is how we usually pronounce an ending T when the next word begins with a consonant, got my. So it's not ga my, ga my, with a continuous flow of sound, but it's got my, got, an abrupt stop for the word, then the word my, got my. We stop the air in our throat, and that signifies the stop T, got my. Got my, got my, got my. The other two T's are also ending T's, but now they're part of a cluster, the ST cluster. And it's very common when a T is between two other consonants to drop that T. So if you look, when we link the two words together, which we always do with a thought group, the T's now come between two consonants. So we will drop them. This is so common with ST ending clusters. When the next word begins the consonant, we drop it. So the word just is a very common word. And when it is followed by a consonant word, we drop that T sound. So instead of I just got, it becomes I just got, just got. The S sound right into the G. 
Does this sound familiar to you? Do you think you've heard Americans doing this? It's really common. Just got. Just got. Just got. Just got my first weird look. And for first weird, we pronounce that first weird. First weird, right from the S into the W. And this helps us link the two words more smoothly. And we always like a smooth line in American English. First weird look. First weird look. First weird look. But you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I know. She's speaking really quickly here. But you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. So even though she's speaking really quickly, some of the syllables are a little bit longer, and that's what helps make it clear to a native listener. Let's just look at the first sentence. But you know what? No and what. Both a little bit longer. We have a stop T at the end of what. But you know what? The intonation goes up at the end. It's a yes, no question. But you know what? But you know what? But you know what? What about but and you? She pronounces that so quickly, bia, bia. She actually drops the T, which isn't that common in general, but in this phrase, which is pretty common, but you know what, or you know what, we say that quite a bit. And in a phrase that's more common, we tend to do even more reductions because of the familiarity. We know that it will still be understood. So it's very common to pronounce this phrase, but you know what, Bia, 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 bia. These two words linked together said very quickly become just the B sound and the schwa, b, b, b. Then the Y sound and the schwa, a common reduction of the word you. Bia, bia, bia. But you know what? But you know what? But you know what? But you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I know. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. End. A little bit longer. At the end. At the end of the day. It doesn't matter. So those syllables are a little bit longer, which provides a little contrast with her very fast speech, her very fast, unstressed words. And we do need this contrast of stressed and unstressed to sound natural in American English. So let's look at the unstressed words at and the. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day. It's actually at V, and the vowel is so fast, this can either be the whole A vowel, or it can be the schwa, at, 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 or at, 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 at. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that it's said incredibly quickly. We have a stop T, so the word at is cut off a little abrupt. You stop the air in your throat. And the E here is pronounced as the E as in she vowel, because the next word begins with a vowel or diphthong sound. If the next word began with a consonant sound, then it would be the, which is what we get here. Here it's pronounced as the schwa because the next sound is a consonant sound. So we have the end and the day. But of course it's not pronounced that clearly, is it? Because this isn't an important word. So it's at the, at the, at the. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day. Of and the becomes other, other. The whole word of is reduced to just the schwa, which we link onto the word the, other, other, other. End of the day. End of the day. At the end of the day. End of the day. End of the day. End of the day. So making these less important words really quickly helps provide the contrast we need. Practice that with me. At the, at the, at the. Other, other. Other. But at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, it doesn't I matter. Know. The words it and doesn't also said pretty quickly. Another stop T here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I matter. Know. It doesn't I matter. Know. It doesn't I matter. Know. It doesn't matter. Now I think I hear the T here being totally dropped as well. This is pretty common. We either drop the T or we make it sort of a nasal stop sound to signify the NT doesn't. Mm, 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 mm. But here, I think she's just making the N sound glide right into the M sound. Doesn't matter. And because of that smooth connection, there's no stop. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The word it very quick stop after it. But these two words are still said pretty quickly. It doesn't, it doesn't, 
matter. And then the stressed syllable, ah, with the ah vowel in matter. And then we have a flap T, matter. It doesn't matter. I know. It doesn't matter. I know. It doesn't matter. I know. I know. I know. So I said this at the same time she was saying, doesn't matter. I know. It's a two word phrase and stress is on the word no, but the pitch of the whole phrase is smooth. It's not I know, but it's this smooth line connecting. I know. It's the smooth change in pitch, this rise and fall of intonation that makes one of the characteristics of American English. Smooth transitions. We want the words to be linked. We want the change in intonation to be smooth so that nothing's choppy. I know. I know. I know. I know. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. Now here I definitely reduce the vowel to the schwa. Uh, uh, stop T. At the end of the day. Again, the whole phrase is very smooth. It the end of the day with end and day being a little bit longer also having that peak in intonation again the letter e here makes the e as in she vowel because the next word begins with the vowel sound and here it makes the schwa because the next word begins with the consonant so we have at the at the end and then i also drop the V sound and make just the schwa, uh, 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 uh. These two words said very quickly, uh, the day. At the end, uh, the day. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. It's the students who matter. It's the students who matter. And here, stu is the most stressed syllable of that phrase. Ma, also a little stressed. Again, we have a flap T here, matter. It's the students who matter. It's the, said quickly. It's the, it's the, it's the. It's the, it's the, it's the. Stu, dinsu, dinsu, dinsu. Students, students, students. Then these two syllables, more quickly. Ma, another little stretch. It's the students who matter. Ah, uh, smooth change in intonation with peaks on the stressed syllables. It's the students who matter. It's the students who matter. It's the students who matter. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. The TH sound here, not terribly clear. She's not bringing the tongue tip through the teeth for it, but she's pressing the tongue tip on the backs of the teeth where the top and bottom teeth meet. The, 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 that's, 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 that's right. It allows us to make that sound a little bit more quickly. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now here we have the T, S cluster into the R. All of these sounds are pronounced. We get tss and then er. That's right. That's right. But this is a stop T where we cut off the air. The pitch doesn't fall down slowly. We have an abrupt stop. Right, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, green beans. Ooh. Okay, green beans. Green, most stressed word in that phrase. And the pitch is all smooth. Okay, green beans. The pitch goes up, energy builds towards the stressed word, and then it falls away. Beans, afterwards. Hey, green beans. Ooh. Hey, green beans. Ooh. Hey, green beans. Ooh. While I say that, Laura says, ooh, ooh, ooh. Just a little exclamation you make when you notice something or something's important, you want to call attention to it, or if you get excited about something, ooh, look at that. Hey, green beans. Ooh. Hey, green beans. Ooh. Hey, green beans. Ooh. Cranberries. Cranberries. Cranberries, cranberries. Stress is on the first syllable there. That's a three syllable word. So the first syllable is cran. And the last two syllables are berries, berries, berries. They're a little less clear, a little bit more mumbled. That's how unstressed syllables sound. Cranberries. 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 Fresh. 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 What do you notice about the intonation of that word? Fresh. 
It moves up and down. And that is the shape of a stressed syllable. Fresh, fresh, fresh. We don't want flat pitches in American English. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A little unclear because my head is turned, so I'm not facing the mic. Oh yeah. But you can still hear that the intonation is nice and smooth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The words link together. There's no separation of the two words. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, and I was hoping. Oh, oh. This is like ooh. It's just a filler word, an exclamation. Oh, oh. Do need some lip rounding for the second half of that diphthong. Oh. 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 Oh, and I was hoping that we wouldn't have to buy a huge bag. And I was hoping that we wouldn't have to buy a huge bag. Ho, oh, buy a huge bag. These are the words that I hear being the most stressed here. The word and is reduced. We drop the D. And I was, 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 and I was. And, I was. and in the word was, we reduce the vowel from the uh as in butter to the schwa. That just means it's said even more quickly with less jaw drop, a little less clarity. I was, 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 and I 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 was. So these three words, a little less clear than the stressed word, ho, hoping, flatter in pitch, said more quickly. And I was hoping that we wouldn't have to buy, and I was hoping that we wouldn't have to buy, and I was hoping that we wouldn't have to buy, that we wouldn't have to buy, that we wouldn't have to buy. What's happening here? We have that we wouldn't have to, and then a little bit longer on by. So how are we saying these words so quickly? The word that, we reduce the vowel to the schwa so that we can say it more quickly. That, that, that. Stop T, that we, that we, that we, that we, that we wouldn't have to. That we wouldn't have to, that we wouldn't have to, that we wouldn't have to buy. Wouldn't have to buy. That we, that we wouldn't have to buy wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to. So again, I think I'm hearing this as a dropped T, just an N sound going right into the H. Wouldn't have to. The vowel here reduces to the schwa. And when we have an ending V linking into two, linking into the word two, which begins with a T, it's often in this two word combination to change the V sound to an F because T is unvoiced, so this becomes unvoiced. The V unvoiced is the F. Have to, have to, have to, have to. Try that with me. Have to, have to. That we wouldn't 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 have to. What do you have to do to be able to say those words that quickly? We have to simplify mouth movements. We have to reduce some of the sounds. And the pitch doesn't change as much. It stays lower and flatter. There is not quite as much energy in the voice. All of these things are part of the important contrast between stressed and unstressed syllables. That we wouldn't have to. That we wouldn't have to. That we wouldn't have to buy a huge bag. How many a huge bag. Uh. The schwa said very quickly, huge, a little bit longer, and then bag has more of that up-down shape of stress. A huge bag. A huge bag. A huge bag. A huge bag. How many do we need? You know, that grocery store made me kind of hungry, and this next one does too. This one is just me talking about what I love for breakfast. Before the conversation, I want to quickly, though, thank everyone who started supporting my channel through the channel memberships. You guys are awesome. Click the join button to find out how you can support my channel and get perks like audio lessons and private posts. Okay, here's the conversation. This morning for breakfast, I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. This is my favorite breakfast, but sometimes I do have eggs. And now for that analysis. This morning for breakfast. One of the first things I notice is how much this S and M were connected. This morning. This morning. It's almost like the S went on the next word. This morning. This morning. This morning. This morning for breakfast. Did you notice how I pronounced the word for? That was reduced to fur, fur, fur. Very quick with the schwa R sound. Fur, fur, 
for breakfast. This morning for breakfast. Also, I noticed the rhythm here. Morn and breck are the two stressed syllables. This morning for breakfast. They have that swooping up and then down shape of the voice that makes up a stressed syllable. Let's listen in slow motion. This morning for breakfast. This morning for breakfast. This morning for breakfast, I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. What do you hear as being the stressed syllables? I hear Barbara's shredded and milk. What else do you notice? I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. I notice that Barbara's is only two syllables, even though it looks like it might be three. We sort of leave this middle sound out here. Barb, ruz. Ruz. Also note this apostrophe S is a Z sound. That's because the sound before is voiced, so the apostrophe S is also voiced. Z, z, ruz, ruz, Barbara's. I also noticed that the ED ending here is pronounced as the I as in sit vowel D sound. That's because the sound before was a D. ED endings are among the few cases in American English that follow regular rules. I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. I noticed that the word with is not reduced, but it's very flat in pitch because it is unstressed. With, with, with. It's also quite fast. With milk. With, 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 with milk. I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. Let's listen in slow motion. I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. This is my favorite breakfast. What was stressed in that sentence? I heard fave and breck. Also, these three words, this is my, those were incredibly fast. Listen again. This is my favorite breakfast. So this string of three unstressed words, this is my, this is my, this is my, this is my. Very fast and very connected. I also noticed that the word favorite was pronounced with only two syllables. As if this letter was dropped. Fave writ. Favorite. Favorite. This is my favorite breakfast. I'm also noticing this T pronunciation. The final T in favorite was pronounced as a stop. Favorite, favorite, favorite breakfast. So there was no release t of the T sound. Favorite breakfast. Let's listen in slow motion. This is my favorite breakfast. This is my favorite breakfast. This is my favorite breakfast. But sometimes I do have eggs. Did you notice the lift here where the comma is? But sometimes I do have eggs. There was just a little pause there for the punctuation. I also noticed how I stressed the word do. I do. I do have eggs. But sometimes I do have eggs. The word eggs, even though it's a content word, a noun, which is usually stressed, doesn't have that much stress, I notice, because it's at the end of a sentence. I do have eggs, 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 with just a little curve up and then down in the voice. I do have eggs. Also the plural ending here, S, is pronounced as a Z. That's because the sound before, the G sound, is a voiced consonant. Eggs, eggs. Let's listen in slow motion. But sometimes I do have eggs. But sometimes I do have eggs. But sometimes I do have eggs. So, just three little sentences, but we really were able to study a lot about American English pronunciation. Let's listen once in slow motion. This morning for breakfast, I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. This is my favorite breakfast. But sometimes I do have eggs. And now the conversation three times. This morning for breakfast, I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. This is my favorite breakfast, but sometimes I do have eggs. This morning for breakfast, I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. 
This is my favorite breakfast, but sometimes I do have eggs. This morning for breakfast, I had Barbara's shredded oats with milk. This is my favorite breakfast, but sometimes I do have eggs. Have you ever felt nervous about starting or ending a phone conversation? Let's do an analysis. Here are the parts. Hey, Mom. What's up? Not much. How are you? Pretty good. What are you doing? Roberta and are here. Oh, that's right. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. Okay, we'll have fun. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy New York. I will. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye. And now for that analysis. Hey, Mom. What's up? Not much. How are you? Pretty good. What would you say about the stress of those first two words? Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. To me, those sound like they're both stressed. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. They both have uh, uh. A little bit of that up-down stress in the voice. Hey, Mom. It's hard to hear my mom's response because it's through the phone. What's up? What's up? What's up? With the intonation going up. What's up? Very smooth and connected. The T-S connected to the a uh vowel. What's up? Not much. How are you? Not much. How are you? I made a stop T at the end of not. We do this when the next word begins with a consonant. Not much. How are you? How did I pronounce the word R? Not much. How are you? I reduced it to the schwa R sound. Hower, hower. And connected it to the word before. Hower, hower. Not much. How are you? How are you? How are you? With the pitch going down. Not much. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are those T's pronounced? Pretty good. Pretty good. Like a flap T or D. Pretty. Pretty. Pretty good. These phrases are typical of starting a phone conversation. You ask the person how they are. How are you? And they ask you how you are. What's up? Generally, you give little generic responses. Not much. Pretty good. This is small talk. Hey, Mom. What's up? Not much. How are you? Pretty good. What are you doing? Roberta and are here. Oh, that's right. Again, the word R. What are you doing? I reduced it to the schwa R sound, water, water. So the T became a flap T between vowels. What are you doing? Water. It sounds like one word, water, water. What are you doing? I dropped the G to make just an N sound instead of an NG sound. What are you doing? What are you doing? Roberta and Ernie are here. Roberta and Ernie are here. The word and was reduced to N. Roberta and Ernie are here. N. Roberta and Ernie. Roberta and Ernie are here. Roberta and Ernie are here. Again, R reduced to the schwa R sound, Ernie. -er. Ernie. -er. Roberta and Ernie are here. Roberta and Ernie are here. Oh, that's right. How was the T pronounced in right? Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. It was a stop T. So we make a stop T unreleased when the next sound is a consonant or at the end of a sentence or thought. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. Okay, we'll have fun. And now, phrases we use in getting off the phone. As you wrap up a conversation. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. Okay, we'll have fun. It's common to tell people to have fun or have a good time with what they're doing next. Here, I'm commenting on their plans for dinner tonight. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. In order to make this first word very quickly, I drop the L and make a stop T. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. All right, all right, all right. I also don't put these commas in, do I? All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. I go straight through them without a pause. 
The first syllable of dinner is stressed. Have a good dinner tonight. Have a good dinner tonight. Have a good dinner tonight. And it's the clearest syllable in that phrase. Notice tonight is pronounced with the schwa. We want to do this all the time. Tonight, tomorrow. In both of those words, the letter O makes the schwa sound. Tonight. How was the T pronounced? Have a good dinner tonight. Tonight. Another stop T at the end of a sentence. Here again, we're entering small talk to get off the phone. I tell my mom to have a good time. She responds, okay, we'll have fun. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. Okay, we'll have fun. The intonation of okay goes up. It shows that she's not done talking yet. She's gonna say one more thing. Okay, we'll have fun. The word fun then goes down in pitch. So I know it's the end of her thought. Okay, we'll have fun. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy New York. I will, thank you. My next phrase again starts with all right, well. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. And again, to make that first word very fast, I drop the L and make a stop T. All right, well, all right, well. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Talk to you guys soon. Talk and soon. Both stressed. Both have the up-down shape. Talk to you guys soon. Talk to you guys soon. Talk to you guys soon. The less important words, like to, are very fast. I reduced the vowel in to to the schwa. T. Talk to. Talk to. Talk to you guys soon. More small talk. Now my mom is wishing me well and telling me to enjoy what I'm doing. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy New York. Enjoy. Have fun. These are the kinds of phrases we say when ending a phone conversation. Enjoy New York. I will. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. And I just respond generically with a confirmation. I will. I will. Thank you. I will. Thank you. I will. Thank you. Bye-bye. My mom actually says bye bye doesn't she? She makes the B sound twice, bye bye This is short for bye-bye. Just... And now, the conversation three times. Hey, Mom. What's up? Not much. How are you? Pretty good. What are you doing? No, are here. Oh, that's right. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. Okay, we'll have fun. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy New York. I will, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Hey, Mom. What's up? Not much, how are you? Pretty good. What are you doing? No, are here. Oh, that's right. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. Okay, we'll have fun. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy New York. I will, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Hey, Mom. What's up? Not much. How are you? Pretty good. What are you doing? No, are here. Oh, that's right. All right, we'll have a good dinner tonight. Okay, we'll have fun. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy New York. I will. Thank you. Okay, now let's play a game. I'm with my family, and I have to get them to guess as many words as I can in a minute. Team two, listen up. I'm looking at you. Three, two, one. Okay, this is something that you use to sweep the floor and you plug it in. Broom. Broom. No, you say vacuum. It's two words. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Oh. And now for that analysis. Team two, listen up. I'm looking at you. Three, two, one. Team two, listen up. So we had divided our family into two teams, and both team and two are stressed. Team two. But two is the most stressed because that is the part that makes it different from team one. And actually, I wrote that poorly. That should look like this. Team two. In English, we don't want choppy words within a thought group. We don't want them to feel separate. 
We always want them to feel very connected. The intonation, the pitch always changes smoothly. Team two. So the ending M right into the T with no break. Team two. Listen up. Team two. Team two. Team two. Listen up. Again here, linked together. Smooth. Listen up. The T in listen is always silent. The ending N linking into the beginning vowel. Nup. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. What's going on with the P here? I'm not releasing it up. P -p -p. I'm not releasing it with a puff of air. My lips close. That cuts off the sound. That's the stop part of the stop consonant. But then they don't open releasing the air. This is fairly normal. It's fairly common to drop the release part of a stop consonant when it comes at the end of a thought group. Listen up. You can see my lips come together. Listen up. That gives the idea of the P, and then that's it. I move on to my next phrase. Listen up is a phrasal verb. How is it different from listen? It's something you would use if you're trying to get the attention of someone or even more often of a, a group of people. This is something you might say if you feel like people have not been paying attention and now you really need them to. You're saying, I need everyone's attention because what I'm about to say is really important. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I say this right as someone on my team cheers me on with a little high-pitched woot woot. That's just something, a, a phrase you might use to show excitement or to cheer someone on in a competition. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. So I say, I'm looking at you. Look and you get the most stress in this phrase. A couple things happen here. First of all, well, we have the contraction I am to I'm, which is said quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking, look being the stressed syllable there, then I change the NG sound. I just make it an N sound looking. So I make the sound at the front of my mouth with the front of my tongue rather than at the back of my mouth with the back of my tongue. I'm looking at you. Looking. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. This is a little bit more casual of a pronunciation, and we definitely change the ng to the n quite a bit in ing words but i don't recommend doing it all the time there's definitely such thing as doing it too much we tend to do it more with the ing words that are the most common what's going on with at you first of all i reduce the vowel in at so it's uh 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 the schwa then we hear a ch sound. Where's that coming from? When a word ends in a T and the next word is you or your, it's not uncommon to combine those to link them together with a ch sound. Chew, chew, it's you, it's you. I'm looking at you. It's you, it's you. I'm looking at you. I must have thought that somebody on my team had not been paying very good attention because I say, listen up which means what I'm saying next really matters. I'm about to start. And then I say, I'm looking at you. Specifically calling out someone on my team. I'm looking at you. Three, two, one. Then my nephew gives me a countdown for the timer. Three separate content words. Three, two, one. All with an up, down shape of stress. Three, two, one. One. We never want flat pitches in our stressed words. This up-down shape of stress, this change of pitch of intonation, is what marks a stressed syllable. It's very natural American English to do this. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, this is something that you use. Okay, this is something... So the words this and is, they would usually be said very quickly. This is something. But as I read it, I'm still thinking about what to say. So they get made longer. This is, they're both turned into stressed syllables. But this is not how it would normally be pronounced. 
this is becomes this is this is this is something this is something that's the change that's important in conversational American English. Now here, of course, it's not quite conversational. This is different. I'm playing a game and I'm taking more time as I'm thinking on the spot. That means thinking without prior preparation about what to say. This is something, this is something, this is something that you use. Something that you use. So here we have a T followed by U. I do not make it a CH. I make it a stop T that you use, but I do reduce the A vowel. That becomes the, 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 this helps me say this word more quickly. That you use. That you use. That you use. That you use to sweep the floor. To sweep the floor. Okay, another example of an overpronunciation of a word. The word to. Almost never pronounced this way in conversational English to, why did I do that? I was thinking of what is the right word to say. So in conversational English, it would be to sweep, to, to, to. The U vowel reduces to the schwa, to sweep, to sweep, to sweep the floor. To sweep the floor, to sweep the floor, to sweep the floor and you plug it in. To sweep the floor and you plug it in. Sweep, floor. To sweep the floor, sweep the floor, sweep the floor. Listen to these three words and pay attention to the stress pattern. It's long, short, long. Sweep the floor, sweep the floor, sweep the floor. Sweep the floor. So the word the doesn't have this up-down shape of stress. It's flatter and it's said very quickly. The, the, the. Sweep the floor, sweep the floor, sweep the floor and you plug it in. And you plug it in and drop the D. So even though I hold this word out a little bit as I think, and I don't reduce the vowel, the vowel is still a, ah, I do drop the D. Just a very common reduction of that word. You plug it in. And you plug it in. And you plug it in. And you plug it in. So here we have three words, plug it in, where you have two links of ending consonant to beginning vowel. Plug it, get, get, so you can think of the ending consonant G as beginning the next word, get, get, plug it, plug it, plug it. That may help you link it in, it in, it in. Here again, we link the ending T right into the vowel I, and it changes to a flap T. Why does it do that? Because it comes between two vowels. It in, it in, it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. Plug in is a phrasal verb, and we use this with electronics or things that charge, where you have the plug and you either insert it into the socket in the wall, or maybe you're inserting the plug into the device itself, like your phone. This is the phrasal verb to plug in. Plug it in. Broom. broom. Plug it in. Broom. broom. Plug it in. Broom. broom. People guess broom. Broom. No, you don't plug a broom in. This was my my main clue sweep of course people are going to guess broom but when i said plug it in remember this has to do with electronics so that was my big clue it's not a broom plug it in broom, broom. No, you said broom. okay so there's some shouting here i say no you plug it in no no just like three two one it's a one word thought group and it has that up down shape no then i say you plug it in as people are yelling. And again, we have this nice linking ending G into beginning vowel, and then the flap T to link these two words, plug it in. And as I do that, they get, they get the idea. Vacuum, they yell. But I need to get them to say vacuum cleaner, so I give them one more clue. It's two words. Uh, it's two words. Two words stress there. The word it's lower in pitch, flatter, faster. Two words. It's two words. It's two words. It's two words. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. So now they're stressing clean because that's what makes the word different from vacuum. Although normally in a compound word like this, it's the first word that is stressed. So that would be 
vacuum cleaner. Other examples of compound words, eyeball, first we're distressed. Mailman, first we're distressed. Basketball, first we're distressed. In this case, well, as always, it's only the stressed syllable. So bass, basketball, the first syllable is stressed. Compound words, first word is stressed. And now the conversation three times. Team two, listen up. I'm looking at you. Three, two, one. Okay, this is something that you use to sweep the floor and you plug it in. Broom. Broom. No, you vacuum. Vacuum. It's two words. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Oh. Team two, listen up. I'm looking at you. Three, two, one. Okay, this is something that you use to sweep the floor and you plug it in. Broom. Broom. No, you vacuum. vacuum. It's two words. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Oh. Team two, listen up. I'm looking at you. Three, two, one. Okay, this is something that you use to sweep the floor and you plug it in. Broom. Broom. No, you vacuum. vacuum. It's two words. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. We went to dinner at a friend's house and she explained what she made. It was so good. The sauce is on the table, so we've got the eggs and the rice. And usually the sometime would, would have sticky rice with it. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this with, without this kind of rice. So I, we just went with the fluffy jasmine. Ollie, what do you think of the food? It's definitely on point. And now for that analysis. The sauce is on the table, so we've got the eggs and the rice. And usually the sometime would The sauce is on the table. What do you think are the two most stressed words there? I hear sauce and table. The stressed syllable of table. I have the sauces on the table. I have the sauces on the table. I have the sauces on the table. The other words are said very quickly. The word the, pronounced with the schwa, the, 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 the. the. Said really quickly, low in pitch, less clear. It's not the, but the, the, the. This is how we pronounce function words in conversation, the less important words. This provides contrast with the stress words, which we want to be clearer and longer and have an up-down shape of stress, intonation in the voice. The sauce, the sauce is on the, is on the. The sauce is on the table, the sauce is on the table, the sauce is on the table. These three words link together very quickly. The ending Z sound links into the vowel is, is on the, the N consonant goes right into the TH sound with no break. And again, the word the pronounced with the schwa very quickly is on the, is on the, is on the. So it's not is on the. All of those are stressed and that's not right, but it's is on the, is on the, is on the, is on the. A little mumbled, a little bit less clear because they are function words, sauce and table. The two content words are longer. And all of the words and all of the sounds flow together smoothly with no jumps in pitch and no choppiness. The sauce is on the table. I have the sauce is on the table. I have the sauce is on the table. I have the sauce is on the table. So we've got the eggs and the rice. So we've got the eggs and the rice. Okay, what is the most stress there? Eggs and rice. Both longer than the rest of the words. So we've got the, 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 so we've got the so we got the, so we got the, the vowel here is almost dropped. It's almost like we're just linking the S sound in. So we've got the, so we've got the, so we've got the. That helps say this word more quickly in this string of words that are said so quickly. So we've got the very quick V sound before the G. Then we have a stop T. So we don't say got the, got the with a true T, but we say got the, got the, got the where we stop the air really quickly in the throat. This symbolizes the stop T. The word the here, she pronounces it with the schwa. The rule is that if the next word begins with a vowel sound like this word, that the E in the is pronounced as the E as in she sound, the, the, the. But I've noticed that this is not a rule that Americans necessarily follow all the time. The, the. The eggs, the eggs. She says it with the schwa. It still sounds normal. Nobody would hear that and think she mispronounced the. The eggs, the eggs, the eggs, and the rice. In the rice, in the rice, 
and and the. Between the two content words, we have two more function words, which will be said more quickly. The word and is reduced. Nth, nth, nth. We drop the vowel and put it into the schwa vowel instead. N. We drop the D altogether. So schwa N. You don't need to try to make a schwa sound. It just gets absorbed by the end. Just make the N. Eggs in the eggs in eggs in eggs in the rice in the rice in the in the in the in the in the got the eggs in the rice got the eggs in the rice got the eggs in the rice making this reduction helps us say this word really quickly and we want to do that because it's not an important word it's a function word those are less important the more important words are the content words and we want the stressed syllable of the content words to be longer for example rice in the rice Nuh, nuh, nuh. Those two words said much more fast than rice, where we take a little bit more time and we have the up down shape of stress. In the rice. In the rice. In the rice. In the rice. And usually the sometime would, would have sticky rice with it. And usually. So here she doesn't reduce the vowel. She keeps the full vowel, but she does drop the D. We almost never say the D unless we're thinking or holding out the word and for some reason. Usually, use the stressed syllable there. Usually, the symptom would is the most stressed syllable of the sentence. And usually, 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 usually. So this word can be pronounced as four syllables: u, j, u, l, e, or more commonly three syllables, and that's what she does. Usually. Usually, you. So the you is in few diphthong stressed. You, jol. The j sound schwa l. It's just a dark l sound. You, jol, e. And the ending e vowel. Usually. Usually. It's easier to pronounce this word as three syllables than four. So I suggest that you practice it this way and use this pronunciation. Usually. Usually, usually, usually the somtum would, would have sticky rice with it. The somtum. The said quickly with the schwa. Then we have a couple words that are a little bit more stressed. Of course, this is not English. This is Thai. She's making a Thai dessert. I'm sorry, a Thai salad here. The word would. L is always silent. Usually the sometime would, would have sticky rice with it. Would have sticky rice with it. Would have sticky rice with it. So stick, the most stressed syllable there. Again, there's no L sound in the word would. Would have, would have, would have sticky rice with it. Would have, would have, would have sticky rice with it. A stop T at the end of it. So we stop the air in our throat. It, 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 it. And this abrupt end signifies the T. Everything in this phrase is smoothly linked together. The D goes right into the H sound. She could have dropped the H, but she didn't. Would have, would have. The V sounds smoothly right into the S T cluster. The E vowel right into the R. The S sound right next to the W. Rice with, rice with. And the ending TH links right into the beginning vowel I with it, with it, with it. Would have sticky rice 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 with it. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this. This, the most stressed, as she's pointing to something. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this. So she puts a little break here between but and I. If she didn't, she would have flapped the T. But I couldn't. But da da da. But I couldn't. Since she doesn't, she puts a break, separating these into two thought groups. We have a stop T. But I couldn't. But I couldn't. But I couldn't. But I couldn't. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this. Couldn't quite. Couldn't quite. You can link the ending N right into the K sound while dropping the T. Couldn't quite. Couldn't quite. Or you can make a little stop in your throat. Couldn't quite. Couldn't quite to signify the T there, either one is okay. And just like with would, the L in could is silent. Both of these have the uh as in 
push, vowel, would, could, couldn't. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this. Quite imagine, quite imagine. Here we have an ending T sound linking into beginning vowel sound. And because the sound before the T was also a vowel or diphthong, it becomes a flap, which sounds like the D in American English. It might sound like the R in your language, depending on the language. Quite imagine. Quite -da 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 -da. The tongue just flaps once against the roof of the mouth. Quite imagine. Quite imagine. Quite imagine. Quite imagine eating this. Quite imagine eating. Another flap T here because it comes between two vowel sounds. Eating. Eating this. Quite imagine eating this. Quite imagine eating this. Quite imagine eating this. With without this kind of rice. With without. So she repeats herself with. She starts the word without. She pauses while she's thinking. Then she says the full word without. Without. Stop T at the end because the next word begins with a consonant. This kind of rice. This, again, a little bit stressed because we're comparing this, this kind of rice with that kind of rice because it's the word that we're using to compare this, that, those, these. It's a little stressed. This kind of rice. This kind of rice. This kind of rice. This kind of rice. Kind of rice. Kind of rice. The word of often pronounced without a consonant, but I do hear a light V sound here. However, the word is said quickly, kind of rice. Uv, 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 uv. It's a function word. It's not as important as the content words like this and rice. So it's a little bit more mumbled. It's said very quickly. Kind of rice. Kind of rice. Kind of rice. Kind of rice. Rice, rice. Her intonation goes up a little bit at the end because she's going to keep going. Making the intonation of her voice go up is a signal to us that she's not finished her sentence yet. Rice, rice, rice. So I, we just went with it. So I, we just went with it. So I, she changes her mind, decides to say something different. We just went with it. This is the end of her thought. And at the end of her thought, her voice trails off a little bit and we get a little bit less air in it. So the last words sound like this. Went with it went with it. We just went with it. We just went with it. We just went with it. This is called a popcorn quality and it comes in a lot um, at the ends of phrases in American English. So we just went with it. Let's talk about the pronunciation of we just went with it. We have an ST cluster followed by a consonant. In this case, we almost always drop the T sound. She does. So instead of just went, it's just went, just went just went right from the s sound into the w sound we just went with it we just went with it we just went with it went went with it went with it stop sound we have a nasal n sound which we stop in the throat went 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 that signifies the stop t with it Everything links together, T links into the I vowel, and we have another stop T because it's a T at the end of a phrase. We just went with it. 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 The phrase to go with something means to go ahead with something, with an idea or with a situation, even if it's not what you originally imagined. So she's saying... This is not the kind of rice she would usually imagine with this dish. But because of another dish, she decided to just go with it. We just went with it, she says. We just went with it. It shows flexibility. Being able to go with the flow to use another idiom. So if something comes up that's unplanned or unusual for you, but you move forward anyway, then you can say, you know what, I'm just going to go with it. Or in the past tense, I just went with it. We just went with it. We just went with it. This is Fluffy Jasmine. Set. Fluffy Jasmine. Now someone else is talking in the background. It's a little hard to hear, but it, these are two two syllable words with stress on the first syllable. Fluffy Jasmine. Fluffy Jasmine. All linked together, all part of the same thought group where we have one steady line of intonation, of pitch. Fluffy Jasmine. Nothing choppy, nothing broken up. This is important in American English. Fluffy Jasmine. Fluffy Jasmine. Fluffy Jasmine. Ollie, what do you think of the food? 
Ollie, what do you think of the food? This is me speaking here behind the camera. Everything is linked together. Again, we have that smooth intonation. Ollie, what do you think of the food? These are the three most stressed words. Ollie, what do you think of the food? Ollie, what do you think of the food? Ollie, what do you think of the food? What do you become? What do you? What do you? What do you? So I drop the T, link the vowel into the D of do. What do you? And I've reduced the vowel here to the schwa in all three of these words. W, d, y. This helps me say them more quickly. They all link together. What do you? What do you? Try that with me. What do you? So it's definitely not what do you. That's way too well pronounced. This is not how we pronounce function words like this. Function words like these need to be lower in pitch, less clear, simplified mouth movements. What do you? What do you? What do you? So that the stressed words pop out of the line more. It is this difference, this contrast between the stressed words, which are longer, clearer, louder, higher in pitch against these unstressed words. It's this contrast that makes American English clear. What do you think of the food? 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 Of and the. Two more function words together said very quickly. Uh, just the schwa. I don't pronounce the V sound at all. The pronounced with the schwa. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the. It's not of the, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, the. This is how we pronounce this in conversation. Uh, the food. What do you think of the food? think and food both being clear and longer what do you think of the food what do you think of the food what do you think of the food it's definitely on point it's definitely on point death and point most stressed words there the word it's is reduced he doesn't really say a vowel he just makes the ts sound it's definitely it's common to do this with the word it's that's what's and let's we just make the ts sound and attach it to the beginning of the next word. It's definitely. It's definitely on point. It's definitely on point. It's definitely on point. Definitely, a little stop T in there. Definitely, because the next sound is a consonant. Definitely on point. It's definitely on point. On point. And he doesn't really release the T. It's certainly not a true T. On point. Point. Mm, 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 mm. A nasal N sound, a little bit of an abrupt stop. That's how we know it's a stop T. On point. On point. This is an idiom. What does the phrase on point mean? It means perfect, really good, high quality, excellent. And I will say I had this food and it was delicious. Let's listen to the whole conversation one more time. The sauce is on the table, so we've got the eggs and the rice. And usually the sometime would, would have sticky rice with it. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this with, without this kind of rice. So I, we just went with the fluffy jasmine. Ollie, what do you think of the food? It's definitely on point. And now the conversation three times. The sauce is on the table, so we've got the eggs and the rice. And usually the sometime would, would have sticky rice with it. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this with, without this kind of rice. So I, we just went with the fluff of jasmine. Ollie, what do you think of the food? It's definitely on point. The sauce is on the table, so we've got the eggs and the rice. And usually the sometime would, would have sticky rice with it. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this with, without this kind of rice. So I, we just went with the fluff of jasmine. Ollie, what do you think of the food? It's definitely on point. The sauce is on the table, so we've got the eggs and the rice. And usually the sometime would, would have sticky rice with it. But I couldn't quite imagine eating this with, without this kind of rice. So I, we just went with the fluff of jasmine. Ollie, what do you think of the food? Here's Tom again, and I'm introducing him to a friend. I'm pregnant in this one. So Quinn, this is Tom. Hi. Hi. Nice How to meet you? you. Nice to meet you too. Have you guys met before? 
Um, I don't think no, so. No, not, not in person, but you've told me about him. Okay. It seems like you have because I've known both of you for so long, but yeah. never overlapped. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's about time. And now for that analysis. And this is Tom. Did you notice how the second syllable of Hakuen and the syllable Tom were the most stressed? They have that up-down shape, especially Tom, which came down in pitch at the end of the sentence. Hakuen, this is Tom. We want this shape in our stressed syllables. The two words, this is, were flatter and quicker. Hakuen, this is Tom. Hakuen, this is Tom. Hi. Hi. Both words, hi, hi, hi had that up-down shape. Hi. 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 Nice How to meet you? you. These two phrases happened at the same time. Hakuen said, nice to meet you. What's the most stressed word there? Nice How to meet you? you. Nice How to meet you? you. Meet. Nice also had some stress a little longer. Nice to meet you. The word to was reduced rather than the u vowel. We have the schwa. Nice to. T. T. Nice How to meet you? you. Nice How to meet you? you. Nice to meet you. What did you notice about the pronunciation of this T? Nice How to meet you? you. Nice How to meet you? you. It was a stop T. Meet you. There was no release of the T sound. Nice How to are meet you? you. Nice How to meet you? you. Tom's phrase, how are you? How are you? Nice How to meet you? you. Nice How to meet you? you. He stressed the word R. How are you? Nice How to meet you? you. Nice How to meet you? you. You'll also hear this with the word you stressed. How are you? Nice How to are meet you? you. Nice to meet you too. Tom really stressed the word too. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too. It was the loudest and clearest of the sentence. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too. He, like Hakuen, also reduced the word to to the schwa. T. Nice to. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too. Also, again, like Hakuen, he made a stop T here. He did not release the T sound. Meet you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too. Have you guys met before? I put a little break here between guys and met while I thought about what I was going to say. Have you guys met before? Did you notice my pronunciation of T? A stop T. Met before? We tend to make T's stop T's when the next word begins with a consonant or when the word is at the end of a thought or sentence. Met before? Met before? Have you guys met before? What do you notice about the intonation of the sentence? How does it end? Have you guys met before? Before. It goes up in pitch. Have you guys met before? That's because this is a yes, no question. A question that can be answered with yes or no goes up in pitch at the end. Other questions and statements go down in pitch. I don't think no. so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Again, there was a clear stop in sound here. I don't think so. I don't think no. so. I don't think no. so. I don't think so. The words were not connected. I don't, I don't, I don't think. I don't think so. Think was the most stressed word there. I don't think so. Feel your energy go towards it and then away from it in the sentence. I don't think so. I don't think no, so. No, not, not in person. The first not was a stop T, as Hakuen did not continue. Not, not, not in person. The second T, though, was a flap T, because it links two vowels together. The A vowel, and the I as in sit vowel. Most Americans will make the T between vowels a flap T, which sounds like a D between vowels. Not in, not in, not in, not in person. Not in person. Not in person. Person is a two-syllable word. Which syllable is stressed? Not in person. Not in person. The first syllable. Per-son. The second syllable doesn't really have a vowel in it. It's the schwa sound, 
but when the schwa is followed by n, you don't need to try to make a separate vowel. Psn, psn. Person. Person. Not in person, not in person, but you've told me about him. How is the T pronounced in but? But you've told me about him, but you've told me about him. It's a stop T, but you've, but you've. What's the most stressed, the most clear word in this phrase? But you've told me about him, but you've told me about him. It's the verb told, but you've told me about him. The sentence peaks with that word. But you've told me about him, but you've told me about him. Hakuen dropped the H in him. We do this often with the words him, he, his, her, for example. Also have and had. But you've told me about him, but you've told me about him. Now the T comes between two vowels. What's that going to be? A flap T. About him. About him. Just flap the tongue on the roof of the mouth. But you've told me about him. But you've told me about him. Okay. I didn't really pronounce the O diphthong here. It was more like a schwa. Okay. Okay. K had the shape of a stressed syllable. Okay. 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 It seems like you have. In the first part of this sentence, what is the most clear, the most stressed syllable? It seems like you have. It seems like you have. It's the word seems. It seems like you have. It seems like you have. It seems like you have. It seems like you have because I've known both of you for so long, but... What about in the second half of the sentence? What's the most stressed syllable? Because I've known both of you for so long, but... Because I've known both of you for so long, but... Known. Because I've known both of you for so long. Long is also stressed. It's also a longer word. Because I've known both of you for so long, but... Because I've known both of you for so long, but... Even though this sentence is very fast, it still has longer stressed words. Seems. Known. Long. It's important to keep your stressed words longer, even when you're speaking quickly. This is what's clear to Americans. Because I've known both of you for so long, but... Because I've known both of you for so long, but... The less important words, the function words, will be less clear and very fast, and sometimes will change the sounds. For example, in the word for, that was pronounced with the schwa. For, for, for. It's very fast. For so long, for so long, but. How did I pronounce the T in but? For so long, but, for so long, but. It was the end of my thought. It was a stop T. But, but, I stopped the air. For so long, but, for so long, but. Yeah. Tom's interjection, yeah. Stressed, up, down, shape, yeah. 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 Never overlapped. Can you tell which is the stressed syllable in never? Which is longer? Never overlapped. Never overlapped. It's the first syllable. Never. What about in the next word? Never overlapped. Never overlapped. Again, it's the first syllable. O-verlapped. Never overlapped. Uh. Never overlapped. Never overlapped. Never overlapped. Notice the ed ending here is pronounced as a t, an unvoiced sound. That's because the sound before, p, was also unvoiced. Overlapped. Overlapped. Never overlapped. Never overlapped. Yeah, well, it's about time. <laughs> Did you notice that Tom didn't really make a vowel here? It's about. It's about. He connected the T-S sound into the next sound. Well, it's about time. Well, it's about time. How is this T pronounced? Well, it's about time. Well, it's about time. A stop T, because the next sound is a consonant. And now, the conversation three times. Hi, Quinn. This is Tom. Hi. Hi. Nice How to meet you? you. Nice to meet you, too. Have you guys met before? Um, I don't think no, so. No, not, not in person, but you've told me about him. Okay. It seems like you have, because I've known both of you for so long, but... Yeah. Never overlapped. Yeah. Well, it's about time. Hi, Quinn. This is Tom. Hi. Hi. Nice How to meet you? you. Nice to meet you, too. Have you guys met before? 
Um, I don't think no, so. No, not, not in person, but you've told me about him. Okay. It seems like you have because I've known both of you for so long, but yeah. never overlapped. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's about time. So, Quinn, this is Tom. Hi. Hi. Nice How to meet you? you. Nice to meet you, too. Have you guys met before? Um, I don't think no, so. No, not, not in person, but you've told me about him. Okay. It seems like you have because I've known both of you for so long, but... Yeah. Now here's a conversation with my dad. Now we were trying to think when was the last time we were out here. When's the last time you came out? I think we came out last winter. Okay. So probably, yeah. Yeah. A month, uh, 12 months ago. Yeah. So. You haven't been out yet this year? No, I think this is the first time. And now for that analysis. Now we were trying to think when was the last time we were out here. This sentence was very fast. So how did I make it so fast? What did I shorten? I noticed I dropped the G here and I made it an N sound instead of an NG sound. Tryin, tryin. This is something that can happen a lot in the South, although really everybody does it with very common ING words sometimes. I tell my students not to do this in general because sometimes they do it too much. But look, here we're studying real conversation and I did it. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. The word too, that was very fast. I made a flap T and a schwa so that it could be even faster. I'm trying to, da, 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 da. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. You can make that word incredibly short. And then, you know, we want to link it to the word before, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. So it doesn't sound like a separate word. It just sounds like another syllable at the end of trying. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think when was the last time we were out here? Another reduction I notice is was. Rather than having the uh as in butter vowel, it also had the schwa was, was. So then it could be really fast. When was, when was the last time? 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 Last and time were both a little bit longer. They're content words, so they're more important. When was the last time? When was the last time? When was the last time we were out here? I notice a stop T here and out, out here, out here. So that saves a little time because I'm skipping the release t out here, out here. That takes time and makes it feel very choppy, but out here, out here. A stop T makes it a little smoother. When we were out here. When we were out here. When we were out here. When was the last time we were out here? When's the last time you came out? I think we came out last winter. My dad also made a stop T out last, out last winter. We came out last. We came out last. We came out last winter. Now he made a true T sound here, winter. T -t -t. Sometimes Americans will drop a T when it comes after N and then it becomes winter. And it sounds like this word. But my dad didn't do that. He made a true T. Last winter, last winter, last winter. Okay. So probably. My dad said the word probably as a three syllable word with stress on the first syllable. Probably, probably. He's speaking extra well here because I've definitely caught him on camera before saying probably, reducing the word to just two syllables. So probably, so probably. So probably, yeah. Yeah. A month, uh, 12 months ago. Yeah. So. My dad did a very common reduction with the word months, and he didn't make a th sound, but just a t sound. So that goes together with the s to make a ts ending. Months, months, months. That helps to make it faster. It's a little bit of a more simple tongue movement rather than making the th. Lots of Americans do this. Months, months. 12 months ago, 12 months ago, 12 months ago. Yeah. So. You haven't been out yet this year? It's a little hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure I dropped the H in haven't. We drop the H at the beginning of function words like have, him, her, he, a lot. That helps us make it quicker, it's less important, and we can link it to the word before. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't. You haven't been out yet this year? You haven't been out yet this year? You haven't been out yet this year? You haven't been out yet? Another stop T here and out. Why are we making all of these stop T's? Remember when a word ends in a vowel or diphthong and then a T 
and the next word is a consonant, y, this is the Y consonant, that we make T's stop T's in general. We skip the release, out yet, out yet. It helps to make the transition more smoothly. You haven't been out yet this year? You haven't been out yet this year? You haven't been out yet this year? I also notice the intonation of the phrase goes up at the end. This year? This year? Why is that? That's because this question can be answered with yes or no. And yes, no questions do go up in pitch at the end. You haven't been out yet this year? You haven't been out yet this year? You haven't been out yet this year? <clears throat> No, I think this is the first time. Yeah. Did you hear how my dad did a vowel to vowel link here? No, I, no, I. So there really wasn't a comma there. No, I, no, I, no, I. We really like to link things together for smooth transitions between words in American English. No, I think this is the first time. Dad did something funny here. He dropped the T, so think really just started with an H sound. Now this is a content word. Content words are important and normally we do not reduce them, but I have noticed that people do drop the TH sound in think and make an H instead. Hink, I hink, I hink so. My husband David says that all the time. I hink so, I hink so. No, I think this is the first, no, I think this is the first, no, I think this is the first time. Yeah. First time, those two words linked together really well because my dad did not release this T and then make another one. There was just one T sound. First time, first time. And now the conversation three times. Now we were trying to think when was the last time we were out here? When's the last time you came out? I think we came out last winter. Okay. So probably, yeah. Yeah. A month, uh, 12 months ago. Yeah. So. You haven't been out yet this year? No, I think this is the first time. Now we were trying to think when was the last time we were out here. When's the last time you came out? I think we came out last winter. Okay. So probably, yeah. Yeah. A month, uh, 12 months ago. Yeah. So. You haven't been out yet this year? No, I think this is the first time. Now we were trying to think when was the last time we were out here. When's the last time you came out? I think we came out last winter. Okay. So probably, yeah. Yeah. A month, uh, 12 months ago. Yeah. So. You haven't been out yet this year? No, I think this is the first time. Have you ever noticed how much people talk about the weather? Today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia. That's 38 degrees Celsius. We're in the middle of a heat wave, which is the opposite of a cold snap. And every day this week is supposed to be upper 90s. I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. And now for that analysis. Today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia. That's 38 degrees Celsius. Today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia. What do you hear as being the most stressed words in that little thought group? Today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia. 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 I hear the stressed syllable of 100 and Philadelphia. Let me write this out. 100. So stress is on the first syllable of hun. 100. Today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia. 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 And I feel that I'm emphasizing the H a little bit more than normal. That's to add stress to that syllable, to that word. A hundred, hundred. Making the H a little stronger than normal. 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 100 degrees. And I break it up a little bit. There's a little break between today and it's today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia. And then I do another little break here. Why did I do that? Well, I think I did it to add emphasis to how hot it is. It's 100 degrees. When we put a little break before a segment in a thought group, it helps to add stress to it, just like exaggerating the beginning consonant did. It's 100 degrees. Today, it's 100 degrees. Today it's a hundred degrees. Today it's a hundred degrees in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. This is a long word. 
And long words can be intimidating. Notice the PH, which is in here twice, is pronounced as an F. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. So the syllable Phil has a little bit of secondary stress. It's a little bit longer, but Del has the most stress, the up-down shape of the voice, and that's what we can use to shape the word. Philadelphia. 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 That's 38 degrees Celsius. That's 38 degrees Celsius. That's 38 degrees. I did it again. I put a little break before the TH for 30, and that adds stress. That's 38 degrees. If I made it more smooth, that's 38 degrees. That's 38 degrees. Then I lose some of the stress that I want to put on how hot it is. I want to put stress on the number. That's 38 degrees. Let's write that out too. That's 38 degrees. That's 38 degrees. That's 38 degrees. 38 degrees. Okay, we have a couple things happening with our T's here. We have this first T in 30. That's a flap T. And the T is a flap T when it comes between two vowels or when it comes after an R before a vowel, like in the word 30. 30. 38 degrees. So the T in 8 is a stop T because the next sound is a consonant. 38 degrees. So we definitely don't release that. It's definitely not a true T. That would sound like this. 38 degrees. 38 degrees. And that's just more emphasis on the T. It's a more clear pronunciation than we would give it. We make it a stop. 38 degrees. 38, 8, 8, 8, 8. We cut off that word by cutting off the air. That abrupt stop is what lets us know this was a T. 38 degrees. 38 degrees. 38 degrees. 38 degrees. 38 degrees. The word degrees ends in the Z sound, and the word Celsius begins with the S sound. If I was speaking less clearly, a little bit more conversationally, I would have said 38 degrees Celsius. And I would have connected the two and just made a single S sound. But I was being a little bit more clear here, just like up here when I said 100 degrees, and then I put a little break after degrees. I did not connect with the same sound because I wanted the 38 degrees to stick out of the line a little bit for stress, for emphasis. 38 degrees Celsius. 38 degrees Celsius. 38 degrees Celsius. 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 First syllable stress. 38 degrees. Stress on thir. 38 degrees Celsius. And then we also have stress on that first syllable. Celsius. 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 We're in the middle of a heat wave. We're in the middle of a heat wave. One word is the most stressed there, is most clear, highest in pitch. What is it? We're in the middle of a heat wave. We're in the middle of a heat wave. We're in the middle of a heat wave. Heat. Definitely heat has the most stress. We're in the middle of a heat wave. And what do you notice about the T there? A stop T because the next word begins with a consonant. We're in the middle of a heat wave. 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 So mid, a little bit of stress. Wave is also a stressed word. It's not as stressed as heat. That's the most stressed. But it is longer and more clear. What about these two strings of words that are not stressed? What do they sound like? Let's just listen to them on their own. First, we're in the. What does that sound like? We're in the. 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 Not very clear. It's definitely not we're in the. That would be a stressed pronunciation. They're all unstressed, said very quickly. No gaps between the words. We're in the, we're in the, we're in the, we're in the. We're in the, we're in the, we're in the. I would write this contraction, we're, 
with the schwa. Schwa R said very quickly, not too clear, wor, 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 wor. Then in, or in, or in, or in, or in, with no break, or in the, or in the, or in the, the word the, with no break, schwa, or in the, 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 then we have the words of and a, uh. of a, 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 of a. I don't drop the V sound, and I would probably write this with the full uh as in butter rather than a schwa, but it's still said quickly. It's still unstressed. Of a, of a, of a, of a. That's really different than our most stressed word, heat, which has up down shape and is much longer. These strings of unstressed words are very flat in pitch compared to the stressed words, and that's part of the important contrast of American English. We're in the middle of a heat wave. We're in the middle of a heat wave. We're in the middle of a heat wave, which is the opposite of a cold snap. Which is the opposite of a cold snap. Which is the opposite of a cold snap. So heat wave, cold snap, in both of those phrases, both words are stressed, but the first word is the most stressed. Which is the opposite of a cold snap which is the opposite of a cold snap, which is the opposite of a cold snap. So in this sentence fragment, op and cold and snap are our most stressed words. And the other words, like above, are less clear, flatter in pitch, unstressed. Let's listen to which is the. Which is the. Which is the. Which is the. The. Which is 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 the now, I noticed I pronounced the word the with a schwa. There is an official rule about the pronunciation of the. And it says when the next word begins with a vowel, you make that an e vowel, the opposite. But I've noticed that many Americans don't do this. And I did not do this here. I made this a schwa, which is the, which is the, which is the. Notice the S in is makes the Z sound. The letter S often makes the Z sound. Don't be deceived and think because you see the letter S that it's the S sound. Which is the, which is the, which is the opposite of a cold snap. Opposite of a cold, opposite of a cold, opposite of a cold. So these words are all linked together. The T becomes a flap T, which links into the next word. Opposite of a, of a, of a, of a, opposite of a cold snap. But all of these words link together. There's no break. There's no choppiness. Which is the opposite of a cold snap. Which is the opposite of a cold snap. Which is the opposite of a cold snap. Let's look at the ending D in cold. It is not released. That would sound like this. Cold snap. Cold snap. Cold snap. Cold d d. We don't do that. We put the tongue up into position for the D and we vibrate the vocal cords. Cold snap. And then we go right into the S sound without releasing. So the D sound is very subtle when it's followed by a consonant because we don't release it. But native speakers still definitely hear that vibration in the vocal cords. Cold, cold, cold snap. Cold snap. Cold snap. Cold snap. So a heat wave is a phrase we use when there's a period of time, a couple of days, where the heat reaches an extreme high. And a cold snap is the exact opposite. We use this phrase for a period of days where the weather reaches extremely low temperatures. Usually a heat wave or a cold snap lasts just a few days, maybe at most a week. We're in the middle of a heat wave, which is the opposite of a cold snap. We're in the middle of a heat wave, which is the opposite of a cold snap. We're in the middle of a heat wave, which is the opposite of a cold snap. And every day this week, and every day this week, and, and, I drop the D there. We almost always drop the D in this word. And, and, I don't reduce the vowel. I still make a, a, an. It is common to make that a schwa. And that would sound like this. And every day this week, Nevery, nevery, but I did put more of a vowel in it, and every, and every day, every day this week, every, the most stressed word there.
and every day this week, and every day this week, and every day this week. Day and week, also a little bit longer than the unstressed word this, but they don't have the height of pitch that every has. Every is most stressed. Every day this week, Let's listen to just these three words, day, this, week, so you can hear the contrast of long, short, long. Da, d, da, 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 day, this week. Day, this week, day, this week, day, this week is supposed to be upper 90s. Is supposed to be upper 90s. Let's write this out again. I should do a better job of writing out my numbers for these exercises is supposed to be upper 90s. So I put a little break here again for emphasis. I want to emphasize how hot it's supposed to be. Upper 90s, upper 90s. Both of those two syllable words have first syllable stress, upper 90s. And notice this is a flap T. It comes between two vowels, 90s, da 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 da. 90s. Now what's happening with the word supposed in the phrase supposed to? Is supposed to be upper 90s. Is supposed to be upper 90s. Is supposed to be upper 90s. So we have is supposed to. Is ends in a Z. Supposed starts with an S. Now here's a case where I am linking and I'm dropping the Z. S is an unvoiced consonant and unvoiced consonants are considered to be strong. Voiced consonants like Z are weak, so when they link together, the strong consonant wins. So rather than saying is supposed and making a Z then an S, it's just is supposed, is supposed, is just one single S sound. Is supposed to, is supposed to, is supposed to. Now this word, this phrase actually, supposed, to never pronounced that clearly. We do a reduction with it. Can you hear it? Is supposed to be, is supposed to be, is supposed to be. Supposed to, supposed to. So it's a three syllable phrase, supposed to. But I turn that into a two syllable phrase, supposed to. So officially this would be a Z D ending, but I make it unvoiced, S, T, and when I link that into the next word that begins with a T, the word to with the reduced to the schwa, T. When I link it in, then I just make one T sound, spost. And I'm basically dropping this first syllable, S, PO. I drop the vowel, so it's just spost, spost. So we do a couple things here. We reduce by, instead of putting a vowel between the S and the P, we just put the S right up next to the P, which drops the first unstressed syllable. So we take the S, put it onto the stressed syllable, PO, SPO, and then we take the ending, we make it unvoiced, and we link it directly into the T, SPOSTA is supposed to, is supposed to. I actually have a video where I go over the pronunciation of supposed to, and I give some more examples. So I'll link to that at the end of this video. But practice that with me for a moment. Is supposed to, is supposed to, is supposed to. That's a very natural way to pronounce those three words together. Is supposed to, be, is supposed to, be, is supposed to be upper 90s. I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. Okay, then I have, I know some people love the heat. It's very clear there, I think, what the most stressed syllable is. What about in the next sentence? I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. I am not. Okay, so in both of those phrases, I bring the stressed word out even more, even more up-down shape, even more putting a little bit more strength on the first consonant. I also make a true T here at the end of not. 
That's again because I'm exaggerating that word. I'm making it even more clear than normal. Normally, if I was going to link that into the sentence, it would be a, a stop T because the next word begins with a consonant. I know you're thinking, wait, that's the letter O, that's a vowel, but phonetically it's written with the consonant one. So that would be a stop T, but I'm making it a true T for extra emphasis to bring it away from the rest of the sentence a little bit for stress. I am not one of these people. 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 So we have a couple other words that have a little bit more length. I know some people love the heat but it's not the same as love, which is the most stressed. And I give a light true T here at the end. It would also be very common to make that a stop T. I know some people love the heat. I know some people love the heat. I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. One, a little bit more length, one of these people and a little bit more length on the stressed syllable of people as well. I am not one of these people. 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 Of these, of these, of these. Said quickly, unstressed, flatter in pitch. One of these, one of these, one of these people. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day. Weather like this weather like this. So weather isn't super clearly pronounced, but I do stress the first syllable, the stressed syllable. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. Stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. So those are the longest, most clear words. Of course, we have other stressed words, makes, want, inside, venture, out, after. But when you have many stressed words in a sentence, some are going to take precedence and are gonna sound more stressed and others will sound more unstressed. And that's what's happening here. All stressed words, all nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs will not be equally stressed in a sentence. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. Are there any reductions? Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. I definitely hear this one, want to, so common to reduce that. Makes me wanna, makes me wanna. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside. So these words here, from like all the way to wanna, a little flatter in pitch, they don't have the stressed shape of the other syllables in this sentence. Makes me want to stay inside all day. Makes me want to stay inside all day. Makes me want to stay inside all day. Makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out and only and only dropped D in and and only venture out and only venture out and only venture out and only venture out after the sun has set. And I put a little break here after out. I make that a stop T. If I didn't put a break and I was linking it in, then it would be a flap T because it would come between two vowels or diphthongs. Out after, out after. But I said venture out after the sun is set. So I put a little break there, breaking up my longer sentence into smaller thought groups. And only venture out after the sun has set. And only venture out after the sun has set. 
and only venture out after the sun has set. Sun has set. Sun has set. So two unstressed words, flatter in pitch, after the sun has set. Contrast of stressed and unstressed, so important. And now the conversation three times. Today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia, that's 38 degrees Celsius. We're in the middle of a heat wave, which is the opposite of a cold snap. And every day this week is supposed to be upper 90s. I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. Today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia, that's 38 degrees Celsius. We're in the middle of a heat wave, which is the opposite of a cold snap. And every day this week is supposed to be upper 90s. I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. Today it's 100 degrees in Philadelphia, that's 38 degrees Celsius. We're in the middle of a heat wave, which is the opposite of a cold snap. And every day this week is supposed to be upper 90s. I know some people love the heat. I am not one of these people. Weather like this makes me want to stay inside all day and only venture out after the sun has set. And now here I'm talking with a friend about his pets. Yeah, we have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Big ones. Big dogs. Okay, mm -hmm. Daisy and let me see if I can remember. Oh. Ban I can't. Banjo. Banjo. That's right. And they made the move with you guys from mm -hmm. Texas. They did. How long have you guys had them? Daisy about five years, Banjo four. And now for that analysis. Yeah, we have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Big ones. Yeah, we have two dogs. Yeah, we have two dogs. What are the most stress words we hear there? I hear two and dogs as being the two content words here, the most stressed words longer. Yeah, also. Yeah. We have. These are both said really quickly. Yeah, we have two. Yeah, we have two. Yeah, we have two. And actually, the word have reduces. He drops the H sound. It's common to do this in function words that begin with an H, like have, had, his, her, him, we have, we have. So the E vowel goes right into the A vowel, smoothly connected, we have, we have, we have, we have. This allows him to say these two words more quickly, and we want to do that because we want contrast with the longer words. So we want our less important function words to be said really, really as quickly as possible. We have, we have, we have two dogs. We have two, we have two, we have two dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respond, I'm pretty sure I knew that. It's like just a way of saying I'm listening to what you're saying. We have two dogs. Yeah. 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 You'll hear this word in conversation a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a stressed word. It will generally have an up-down shape of stress and be a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than yeah. 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 Which is how it would be pronounced if it was unstressed. Yeah. Big ones. Big we have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. We have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. We have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Big ones. Big ones. Big ones. So these are both stressed words. Big ones. They're both longer than a function word like we have up here. Big ones. Big is more stressed than ones. The pitch is a little bit higher. Big ones. The pitch for ones falls away from the stressed big, from the peak of big. Big ones. Big ones. Big ones. Big ones. Big ones. Big dogs. Big dogs. So again, two stress words, and I'm sort of stretching them out even more. Big dogs. I'm doing this for emphasis. Big dogs. Big dogs. Big dogs. Okay. Mm -hmm. He says, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can see his mouth doesn't open at all. This is an affirmation, a way of saying yes or yeah. We say it a lot in conversation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Daisy and. Mm -hmm. Okay. Daisy and. So in this thought group, day 
is definitely the most stressed. It's a proper noun. It's the name of the dog. So the stress syllable of this word will be very clear. Daisy. Okay, Daisy. Okay, Daisy. Okay, Daisy. Okay, Daisy and and so this is unusual. This is a function word. We usually reduce it, which means we drop or change some of the sounds. I say the whole word clearly. The a as in bat vowel transitioning into the N consonant and the D sound. We almost always drop the D, but I'm thinking here. I can't remember the name of his other dog. And so by drawing out the word like that, I'm taking more time showing that I'm uncertain, trying to remember that dog's name. And, and, and let me see if I can remember. Let me see if I can remember. Let me see if I can remember. C and the stressed syllable of remember are the most stressed words there. The rest are said very quickly and we do have some reductions. Let me becomes lemme. We drop the T completely. You might have seen people write it this way before, lemme. I don't recommend writing reductions, but we use them in spoken English all the time. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I can remember. If I can. If I can. If I can remember. So if I can, and actually even the first syllable of remember, because it's unstressed, if I can re are all said really quickly, lower in pitch, a little flatter in pitch. If I can re. All of them link together smoothly. If I can re. If I can re notice the word can, I'm not pronouncing it fully pronounced, which would have the a ah vowel, but I'm reducing it. Can, 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 k, schwa, n, can, can, can. This is because can is a helping verb here. That means it's not the main verb. Remember is the main verb. Remem, and it does have stress, but can when it's not the main word, which is most of the time when it's not the main verb, is reduced. So instead of can, it becomes can, can, can. Said very quickly. Practice that with me now. Can, can. If I can, if I can, if I can, if I can. If I can remember. If I can, if I can, if I can remember. So there's a big difference between the unstressed words, if I can, and the stressed word, remember, which has that clear up-down shape, full pronunciation, long stressed syllable if i can remember i if i can remember if i can remember if i can remember oh Man. i can say oh i can't i can't i can't a stop here at the end where we stop the air can't mm -mm -mm. an abrupt stop the air stops in my nose because n is a nasal consonant i can't i can't and i Ban I can't. Ban I can't. Ban I can't. Ban banjo. Say this at the same time that he is taking me out of my misery and giving me the right answer. Ban. Banjo. Banjo. Again, it's a proper noun, so it's going to be stressed. The first syllable is the stressed syllable. Banjo. 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 That's right. Banjo. That's right. So I'm being dramatic here, spending more time on the name. Of course, I remember as soon as he said it, I've seen Banjo on Instagram many times. Banjo. 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 That's right. Banjo. That's right. That's right. That's right. These two words, a little bit mumbled. Not as clear. I definitely drop the TH in that's. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's pretty common. In fact, I could have even dropped the vowel and just put the TS sound in front of the R consonant. That's right. That's right. We do that quite a bit with that's, it's, let's, and what's. Reducing those words to just the TS sound. But here, I don't do that. I keep the A vowel, but I do drop the beginning consonant. That's right. That's right. This is pretty normal. You'll hear this quite a bit in normal conversation, casual conversation. And that's right. That's right. That's right. And they made the move with you guys. 
and they made the move with you guys. So notice I definitely dropped the D here, and that is a more normal pronunciation of the word and. And they made the move. I keep the full A vowel, could have reduced it to the schwa. And they made the move. And they made the move. And they made the move. And they made the move with you guys from mm -hmm. Texas. And they made the move with you guys. A little stress there. From Texas. So the stressed words, more clear, more time, up, down, shape of stress. The unstressed words, flatter in pitch, said more quickly, less important. And they made the move with you guys from Texas. The word from reduced. It's not from, but from. From. From Texas. So the vowel changes to the schwa, so we can say that word really quickly. From. From Texas. They did. Mm -hmm. Again, an affirmation like saying yes. They did. They did. Did. More stress than they. They did. Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. They did. How long have you guys had them? How long have you guys had them? How long have you guys had them? That is definitely the longest word in the sentence, the most stressed. The other words, a little less clear. In fact, I reduced the word have by dropping the H consonant. How long have you guys, of, of, of. I also changed the vowel from a to the schwa. So it's just schwa v, long of, long of, long of. And whenever we do reductions, we wanna make sure that we link them in. So this is just linked right on to the next word, to the word before and the next word. How long of, long of. Practice that with me now. Long of, long of, long of you, long of you. How long have you guys had them? How long have you, how long have you, how long have you guys had them? Had, also has a little bit of stress. Had them, had them. Them is another word that often reduces by dropping the TH. I did not do that here. How long have you guys had them? Even though I didn't do it, it's still not stressed. It's lower in pitch. The intonation doesn't have the uh, up, down, shape of stress, that curve in the voice. How long have you guys had them? Them, them, them. You guys have them. You guys have them. You guys have them. Daisy, about five years. Banjo, four. Daisy, about five years. Day, five and banjo about four. So again, our two proper nouns, daisy and banjo, stressed. Here we're talking about, we've already established that that's who we're talking about, and now we're asking about something different. We're asking about how long Chris has had these dogs. So I think the word five is even more stressed than daisy. Daisy about five years because this is the new information this is the information i'm asking about daisy about five years daisy about five years daisy about five years about five years five years about with a stop t because the next word begins with a consonant about five years about five years about five years about five years Five years. The intonation for the word years is a little high and he holds it out a little bit. That says to me that it's an estimate. It's like not exactly five years. Five years. Five years. Five years. Five years. And he's also thinking, how would I say that? Is that true? Maybe he's also thinking about banjo. He's about to tell me banjo's age. Maybe he's not quite sure how long they've had banjo. Four. Five years, banjo. Four. 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 So we have a bit of this quality, uh, which is called popcorn. We have a bit of a popcorn sound in the voice, and that's pretty normal for final words in a thought group. The general trend of phrases in American English is that they go down in pitch and they lose energy towards the end. That's why it's very common for there to be that popcorn quality at the end of a sentence. Four four instead of four 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 
for. If you notice this, pay attention to this. You don't want to have this popcorn quality in your voice all the time, but if you do bring it in at the ends of phrases, it can definitely help you sound more natural when speaking English. And now the conversation three times. Yeah, we have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Big ones. Big dogs. Okay, mm -hmm. Daisy and let me see if I can remember. Oh, Ban I can't. Banjo. Banjo. That's right. And they made the move with you guys from mm -hmm. Texas. They did. How long have you guys had them? Daisy, about five years. Banjo, four. Yeah, we have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Big ones. Big dogs. Okay, mm -hmm. Daisy and let me see if I can remember. Oh. Ban I can't. Banjo. Banjo. That's right. And they made the move with you guys from mm -hmm. Texas. They did. How long have you guys had them? In this next conversation, I'm talking about being stressed. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of, but in a very good way. You know I'm leaving for Europe. Yes, that's right. How long are you going to be gone for? I'm going to be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. It's a good long time. I'm leaving in 10 days, so it feels like there's a lot to be done. And now for that analysis. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Every word there was quite fast, except for the word you. It's a little uncommon to stress a function word like this. Normally, I think I would stress the word stressed. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? But the reason why Tom stressed the word you is because I had just asked him if he was stressed about anything. So now he was turning the question to me and he stressed you. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Are you stressed about anything, Rach? A couple other things I noticed about this sentence. Tom turns the T into a D, making it a flap. About anything. About anything. He's doing this because it's a T coming between two vowel sounds. Even though it's two separate words, the T still comes between two vowel sounds, which means it's a great opportunity to link the two words together with a flap T, which sounds like the American D. About anything. About anything. About anything. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Did you notice how the intonation went up at the end? About anything, Rach? 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 That's because this is a yes-no question. And yes-no questions go up in pitch at the end. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> These next two sentences are great examples of reducing the word can. Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. The word can is so fast there, as if it has no vowels at all, just the K sound and the N sound. Can, can, can. Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> Notice how everything flows together. We don't feel like we have five separate words in this sentence. Can I call you Rach? Can I call you Rach? It's just like one long word. We do that by linking words together. When a word begins with a vowel and the word before ends in a consonant, this is an easy time to link, just like up here when we used a flap T to link. Can I, can I, can I. Linking an ending consonant to a beginning vowel helps smooth out the line. Can I, can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. Again, the word can is almost lost here. Can, can. You can call me Rach. Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> we reduce the word can like this when it's not the only verb in the sentence. In these two sentences, the main verb is call. That means the word can is a helping verb. That's a function word. It's not as important as the main verb call. The word can is usually a helping verb. When you pronounce it reduced, can, can, it will help you sound more American. Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. Can, can. Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of, but in a very good way. Did you notice another flap T here linking the word sort and of? Sort of, sort of, sort of. 
So it sounded like an American D. I just said that when the T comes between two vowel sounds, it turns into a flap T and can link words. But R is not a vowel sound. The rule is if the T comes between two vowels or after an R before a vowel, that it becomes a flap T. Sort of, sort of, sort of. If we think of this as one word, stress is on the first syllable, sort of. And the second syllable is very fast. It has the schwa, not a full vowel. Sort of, sort of. Um, sort of, but in a very good way. Let's go back for a second. I left something important out, the word um. This is the word we use when we're thinking, um, or uh. These thinking sounds use the uh as in butter vowel, uh, uh. I call this the core sound of American English. Everything in the mouth, face, neck, throat is extremely relaxed. Uh, um. That allows the placement to be lower in the body, less in the face. Very American. Um, uh. Um, sort of, but in a very good way. Um, sort of, but in a very good way. The first syllable of the word very, ver, and the word way, but in a very good way, are the most stressed. Do you hear how fast this string of function words is? But in a, but in a, but in a, but in a, but in a very good way. They all link together. Again, we have ending consonant linking into a beginning vowel, ending consonant linking into a beginning vowel. Both of these links help to make it sound like one word, very smooth, but in a, but in a. Again, this T is turning into a flap T or a D sound, but in a, but in a, but in a very good way. Um, sort of, but in a very good way. You know I'm leaving for Europe. You know I'm leaving for Europe. What do you hear as the most stressed syllables in the sentence? I hear no. Leave. Your. You know I'm leaving for Europe. You know I'm leaving for Europe. You know I'm leaving for Europe. These are all the most important parts of the sentence. The content words. Content words are nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Here we have verb, verb, and proper noun. You know I'm leaving for Europe. Notice that in a content word, for example, leaving, that only the stressed syllable is stressed. Even though this is an important word, and it is a stressed word in the sentence, the unstressed syllable, the ing ending, is not stressed. So unstressed syllables, even in stressed words, are still unstressed syllables. You know I'm leaving for Europe. You know I'm leaving for Europe. Notice I use the contraction I'm. Some of my students don't like to use contractions because they don't think they're clear enough. They will say I am. You know I'm leaving for Europe. But using a contraction like I'm is just like up here where we took these three words and linked them together and made them very fast. But in a. So contractions are words we reduce and link together in writing and in speech. I'm, I'm. You know I'm leaving for Europe. You know I'm leaving for Europe. Reducing and contracting words will help you sound very American. There's actually one more example of a reduction in this sentence. It's the word for. For Europe. For Europe. I reduce that vowel to the schwa. And the schwa r together make one sound er, er, er. For, for, for. For Europe. For Europe. And again here we have an ending consonant linking into a beginning vowel. For Europe, for Europe, for Europe. So those two words glide together very easily. For Europe, for Europe. You know I'm leaving for Europe? Yes, that's right. How long are you going to be gone for? I'm this was all very fast. Yes, that's right. How long are you going to be gone for? Wow. Tom didn't even really finish the word right. Yes, that's right. How long? He certainly didn't pronounce a full T. He moved on to the next sentence before he even finished that word. Yes, that's right. How long are you going to be gone for? I'm so there was no real break here between sentences. You probably noticed he took going to and turned it into gonna. 
How long are you gonna? You gonna? You gonna? You gonna? How long are you gonna be gone for? Yes, that's right. How long are you gonna be gone for? I'm yes, that's right. How long are you gonna be gone for? I'm did you notice Tom did not reduce the word for to the schwa? Well, I just said that that's something that we want to do with this word in order to make it sound more American. But I do need to add, we don't reduce words like for when they're at the end of a sentence. Yes, that's right. How long are you gonna be gone for? I'm there they need to be fully pronounced. Even though it was still very fast, it wasn't a stressed word, it did have the full vowel. Yes, that's right. How long are you going to be gone for? I'm going to be gone for five weeks. What? I'm going to be gone for five weeks. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. Again, I used I'm instead of I am. That helped me make it fast and less important compared to the more important words in the sentence. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. What? I'm going to be gone for five weeks. You also may have noticed I also took going to and pronounced it gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. How do you hear this word for? Listen again. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. You're right. It's reduced. For, 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 for five, for five, for five weeks. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. So the most important words there, the loudest, the clearest, are gone, five, and weeks. Those are the words that carry the actual meaning of the sentence. So we don't reduce these more important words. But if we say all the other words fast, reduce them, then it makes these more important words stand out the most. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. It's a good long time. Tom didn't really pronounce the TH here. He reduced the word that's to just the schwa ts sound. It's a, it's a, it's a good long time. That's a good long time. I'm gonna be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. I'm gonna be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. We reduce that's, it's, what's at the beginning of a sentence like this a lot. And look, we have an ending consonant beginning vowel to link. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good long time. He stressed the last three words. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. We have adjective. Adjective. Noun. The three content words are stressed, longer, clearer. I'm going to be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. It's a good long time. I'm leaving in ten days. I reduced the word it's by dropping the vowel. It's a, it's a, it's a good long time. It's a good long time. I'm leaving in 10 days. It's a good long time. Linking the TS cluster into the schwa. It's a, it's a, it's a good long time. It's a good long time. Again, these three words are stressed. Good long time. I stress the word good the most. It's a good long time. It's a good long time. Just like Tom did earlier, I didn't really leave a sentence break here, did I? I went straight on to my next thought. It's a good long time. I'm leaving in 10 days. Look, another contraction. The most important syllables in that sentence, leave, 10, days. I'm leaving in 10 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 days. Again, they're the most important parts of the sentence for content. The verb leaving and the time amount, 10 days. I'm leaving in 10 days, so it feels like there's a lot to be done. I notice the word it is not very clear. So it feels, so it feels. I'm leaving in 10 days, so it feels like there's a lot to be done. So it feels like the word it begins with a vowel. Here, the word before ends with a vowel, so we can link vowel to vowel. So it, so it, so it. So it feels like... It's a very smooth transition, and it can feel like I go through the glide consonant W. So it, so it, so it. That helps me link them together. So it feels like... What's happening with the T in it? It's a stop T. So it, so it, so it feels. So it feels like... The T is not fully pronounced. So it, so it. But instead, I stop the air. So it, 
In general, we pronounce T's this way when the next sound is a consonant. So it feels like there's a lot to be done. And the ending Z sound of theirs links right into the schwa sound a. Uh. There's a. There's a. There's a lot to be done. There's a lot to be done. There's a lot to be done. How are these two words pronounced? Lot to. Lot to. This is clearly not an ooh vowel, it's a schwa. Lot to. But what about the T's? Lot to. I'm making the first T a stop T. Lot. So I'm just stopping the air for a second. Lot to. Lot to. Before releasing to make the second T. There's a lot to be done. There's a lot to be done. There's a lot to be done. We use these three words together, a lot to, quite a bit. Let's do a quick comparison to a lot of, which we also use together frequently. Here we have an ending T consonant and beginning vowel. The T comes between two vowels, so it's a flap T or a D sound. A lot of, a lot of. So the T in lot is pronounced one way in this phrase, a lot to, and a different way in this phrase, a lot of. And now the conversation three times. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> <laughs> Um, sort of, but in a very good way. You know I'm leaving for Europe. Yes, that's right. How long are you going to be gone for? I'm going to be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. It's a good long time. I'm leaving in ten days, so it feels like there's a lot to be done. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of, but in a very good way. You know I'm leaving for Europe. Yes, that's right. How long are you going to be gone for? I'm going to be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. It's a good long time. I'm leaving in ten days, so it feels like there's a lot to be done. Are you stressed about anything, Rach? Can I call you Rach? You can call me Rach. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of, but in a very good way. You know I'm leaving for Europe. Yes, that's right. How long are you going to be gone for? I'm going to be gone for five weeks. That's a good long time. It's a good long time. I'm leaving in ten days, so it feels like... There's a lot to be done. Here you get to see my in-laws, my husband David's parents. Not till two. Right, but and we're... maybe somewhat after that. Yeah. But we said we'd be there at 1.30. Right, I think they want to just chat and yeah. you know, stuff before. Sure. And... Will it take like 15 minutes to get there? Or... Oh no, it'll take 10, five. five. And now for that analysis. Not till two, right? But and we're, maybe somewhat after that. Yeah. But we said we'd be there at 1.30. I noticed my dad makes a stop T here, not till, not till, instead of not till. That makes the transition between these two words less obvious. It makes it a smoother link, not till two. Not till two, not till two. Right, and but we're, maybe somewhat after that. Yeah. Another stop T here at the end of that because it's the end of a thought. The end of the sentence, often we make those T's stop T's in American English. Somewhat after that, yeah. somewhat after that, yeah. somewhat after that. Yeah. But we said we'd be there at 1.30. But we, I actually dropped the T altogether here to make this even more connected and smooth. But we, but we. But is a function word, not too important, so it's okay to reduce it. But we said we'd, but we said we'd, but we said we'd be there at 1.30. Did you notice how I pronounced 30? I took this second T and made it a flap T, so it sounded like a D, 30, 30, 130. But we said we'd be there at 130, 130, 130. This was another stop T. And it was very quick, so it was hard to tell, but I think this was a schwa, it, it, it 130, it 130. Be there at 130, be there at 130, be there at 130. When you're talking about the time of something, try pronouncing at this way, very quickly. Right, I think they want to just... Another stop T here, it's the end of a sentence, right. Right, 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 I think they want to just... Did you notice how my dad did not make a TH sound here, but rather just an H sound? And he connected it to I. I think, I think, I think. I think they want to just, I think they want to just, I think they want to just... I have noticed some native speakers do this with the TH in think. We use this phrase a lot, I think this, I think that. 
And it's not uncommon to hear the H sound instead of the TH. It's a funny little reduction that we do of a content word. I think they. I think they want to just, I think they want to just, I think they want to just chat. And yeah. You probably noticed the wanna reduction here. I think they wanted, I think they wanted, I think they wanted. Very common in American English. I think they want to just chat. And yeah. Also the word just. We often reduce this so it sounds like there's basically no vowel. Just, 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 wanna just, wanna just. I think they want to just, I think they want to just, I think they want to just chat. And yeah. Chat, another stop T at the end of this thought. I think they want to just chat. And yeah. The word and was very reduced to just the schwa N sound. Mm, mm. Chat. And yeah. Chat. And yeah. Chat. And yeah. Yeah, you know, stuff. Mm. You know, did you notice that this was the schwa and not the U as in boo vowel? Yeah, yeah, you know. We pronounce these two words together this way all the time. You know, you know, you know. Chat and yeah. Yeah, you know, stuff. Yeah, you know, stuff. Yeah, you know, stuff before. Sure. And Will it take like 15 minutes to get there? Or? Let's talk about the word 15 for a second. Some people have a hard time hearing the difference between 15 and 50. The sounds are a little different, but also the stress is different. 15. Stress is on the second syllable there. Teen. Teen. 15. So it's short, long. For the word 50, it's the opposite. It's long, short. 50. 50. 15. 15. Will it take like 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes to get there? Or? I reduced the vowel in two to the schwa like we almost always do. I did keep this as a true T though. The sound before was unvoiced. Tss, tss, tss. Minutes to, minutes to. 15 minutes to get there, or 15 minutes to get there, or 15 minutes to get there. Or. Did you notice this T? Stop T because the next sound was a consonant, the voiced TH. Get there, get there. 15 minutes to get there, or 15 minutes to get there, or 15 minutes to get there, or. How was this word pronounced? Er, er. Just the schwa R sound very quick. This is another function word, so I've reduced it. To get there, or to get there, or to get there, or. Oh no, it'll take. Did you hear dad? He reduced it will to the contraction it'll, 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 it'll. Oh no. It'll take, oh no, it'll take, oh no, it'll take. Ten. Five. Five. What's different about the pitch, the intonation of these two phrases? Ten. Five. Five. This one goes up in pitch. This one goes down. That's because I'm asking the question here. I don't know how long it will take. The statement where my dad was sure goes down in pitch. If you're not sure, your phrase goes up. If you're sure, your phrase goes down. And now the conversation three times. Not till two. Right, and, but and we're, maybe somewhat after that. Yeah. But we said we'd be there at 1.30. Right. I think they want to just chat and yeah. you know, stuff before. Sure. And Will it take like 15 minutes to get there? Or? Oh, no. It'll take 10. Five. five. Not till two. Right, and but we're, maybe somewhat after that. Yeah. But we said we'd be there at 1.30. Right. I think they want to just chat and yeah. you know, stuff before. Sure. And Will it take like 15 minutes to get there? Or? Oh, no. It'll take 10. Five. five. Not till two. Right, and but maybe we're, somewhat after that. Yeah. But we said we'd be there at 1.30. Right. I think they want to just chat and yeah. you know, stuff before. Sure. And, Will it take like 15 minutes to get there? Or? Oh no, it'll take 10, five. five. I don't live in New York City anymore. I live in Philadelphia, but in this old clip, I'm describing where I live. I live in New York City, in Manhattan, currently in Midtown, but I do move around a lot. I've been in New York for about five years and I've already moved four times. And now for that analysis. The first things I notice is how my voice goes up at the end of the word city. 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 
That's because of the comma here, and I'm not done. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to say more about that. I live in New York City. I live in New York City. I also notice how connected that first line is. I live in New York City. There are no breaks. I live in New York City. I live in New York City. And I notice the ending consonant sound of live links into the beginning of the next word. Live in, vin, 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 live in. I live in New York City. I live in New York City. I live in New York City. In Manhattan. In Manhattan. Again, my voice went up at the end. Manhattan. Again, there's a comma here, and I'm about to give more information about that. New York City, Manhattan, more specifically Midtown. So my voice is going up at the end of each of these little phrases to signal that there is more information yet to come about this. In Manhattan, in Manhattan, I notice that the stressed syllable of Manhattan is the middle syllable, Manhattan. Also, I hear that I'm not really pronouncing these T's as true T's. That would be Manhattan, tin. But I'm saying Manhattan with a little break. That means these T's are stop T's. In Manhattan, in Manhattan. Also, the last syllable, mm, 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 is really just the N sound. So the letter A there is representing the schwa sound. Manhattan, Manhattan. In Manhattan, in Manhattan, in Manhattan, currently in Midtown. Again, I did not hear the release of this T. That would be currently. I heard currently with a stop. That's a stop T. Currently, currently. And in this three syllable word, I noticed that stress is on the first syllable. Cur, cur, currently. Currently in Midtown. Currently in Midtown. Midtown. Stress on the first syllable here, and that is a true T. Midtown. Currently in Midtown. Currently in Midtown. Currently in Midtown. Currently in Midtown. But I do move around a lot. The stressed syllables in that sentence are do, round, and lot. But I do move around a lot. But I do move around a lot. But I do move around a lot. Let's talk about the T pronunciations here. But I do. But I, but I. I'm hearing that as a flap T or a D sound. But I, but I. It's also very connected. But I do. But I do. But I do move around a lot. But I do move around a lot. The final T, lot. I did release that and give it a true T sound. But I do move around a lot. But I do move around a lot. But I do move around a lot. Again, this sentence was very linked together. The ending V consonant here linking on to the next vowel. Move a, move a, v, 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 move around. But I do move around a lot. 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 I've been in New York for about five years. The stressed words in this sentence fragment, New York and five years. I've been in New York for about five years. I've been in New York for about five years. So how are the unstressed words pronounced? The contraction I've, the word been, and in. They're all quite quick and linked together. I've been in, I've been in, I've been in, I've been in. I've been in New York. And the words for and about, for about five years. I notice I'm reducing this to the schwa, for, for, for about five years, for about five years. I've been in New York for about five years. So these three words, I've been in, very quick, they're unstressed. New York. The pace slows down a bit there, so those words are longer because they're stressed. Then, for about. Those two words, unstressed, are again quite quick. For about. And then, five and years are both given more time because they're stressed. I've been in New York for about five years. I've been in New York for about five years. I've been in New York for about five years, and I've already moved four times. Here I'm hearing all. 
and moved for and times as being the most stressed syllables in that sentence fragment. And I've already moved four times. And I've already moved four times. And I've already moved four times. I also notice I'm not really pronouncing the L here. This syllable is coming out more like the aw as in law vowel. Already, already. And I've already moved four times. And I've already moved four times. Also, did you notice how I reduced the word and? And I've already moved in, 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 in. The schwa N sound. And I've already moved. And I've already moved four times and I've already moved four times. And now the conversation three times. I live in New York City, in Manhattan, currently in Midtown, but I do move around a lot. I've been in New York for about five years and I've already moved four times. I live in New York City, in Manhattan, currently in Midtown, but I do move around a lot. I've been in New York for about five years and I've already moved four times. I live in New York City, in Manhattan, currently in Midtown, but I do move around a lot. I've been in New York for about five years and I've already moved four times. Chatting with friends here about reading headlines in the paper. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people is I'll be like, oh, I read about, yeah. but I didn't actually read the actual the thing. Actual about. I read the headline or I read the one sentence blurb that yeah, Facebook posts with the headline. And now for that analysis. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people is I'll be like, oh, I read about. In this little clip of conversation, my friend Laura and I are talking about how we're in this bad habit of not actually reading articles. We'll just read headlines and the one second summary, and then we'll talk about it. Oh, I read about blah, 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 even though we didn't actually read the article. Are you guilty of that too? I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. Okay, this is a really long thought group and I'm speaking pretty quickly. But even though I am, I am still making some words longer. They're being brought out with a little bit more length, but also a little bit more volume. And they'll be a little higher in pitch. They'll have, ah, this shape. Let's try to identify what they are. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. I feel like I feel like that's a lot. Let's just start there. I feel like that's a lot of the feel and lot are a little bit longer and they have the peak of the volume and of the pitch of the stress. Let's listen to that little sentence part, that little sentence fragment again. I feel like that's a lot of the 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 So even though we speak quickly in American English, we still have longer syllables and that is really important for clarity with American English. I've had some students who know that Americans speak quickly and they want to do that too, but it feels way too rushed. And the reason why is because it doesn't have these longer words or syllables within the faster syllables. We have to have the long ones too. I feel like that's a lot of that. Okay, let's listen to a little bit more and see what else do we hear as being a little bit longer, a little bit more stressed. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. Conversations that I have with people. Converse. So this syllable is a little bit more stressed, a little bit longer. Conversations that I have with people. Have is more stressed here. A little longer. The conversations that I have with people. The conversations that I have with people. The conversations that I have with people is I'll be like, oh, I read about. Yeah. Conversations that I have with people is I'll be like, oh, I read about. So those are for me the longest, most clear syllables. And a lot of the other syllables are said really quickly. Are there any reductions? Let's go back and see. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. 
Let's look at the first sentence fragment. Um, what's happening? So I, this is not a reduction, but it's a link when we're putting two words together when one word ends with the same sound that the next word begins with. We don't say feel like, but we say feel like. We connect them with a single L. I feel like. I feel like that's a lot of the. I feel like. I feel like. I feel like that's a lot of the. Another thing, so we have the, the linked L here. Another thing I'm noticing is um, how high the intonation is here. I feel like, I feel, feel, that's pretty high. And I guess I was just doing that because it's sort of funny. And so that brought more emotion and energy into the voice, which made the pitch even higher. Okay, so everything links together. I feel like that's K right into TH sound, TS cluster right into the schwa. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a. Then we have a lot of the. Now, it's unclear to me the word of would be fully pronounced this way. I definitely reduce it to the schwa. I'm not quite sure if I drop the V or not. It's said very quickly. Uh, you can definitely drop the V here. A lot of the, a lot of the. Then you just use the schwa to link lot and the. And the T here will become a flap T. Just one single flap against the roof of the mouth. Uh, because it comes between two vowels. And the little three-word phrase, a lot of, is very common. So practice it that, with, that way with me right now. A lotta, a lotta, a lotta, a lotta. Really smooth forward flow of sound. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of the conversations that I have with people. The conversations that I have with people. Okay, so the schwa of the going right into the C. There's no break here. The conversations that, the word that. I reduce that. The vowel has the schwa. Conversations that, that I have with people. Okay, I'm doing something a little interesting here. Well, first, the Z sound of conversations linking into the TH. Conversations that, conversations that, no stop in sound. So usually most people would, would link this, but I don't, I don't link it with a flap T. I sort of re-emphasize. Why do I do that? Don't know. Doesn't matter. S usually we'll link things with a flap T when the next word begins with a vowel. We'll link that ending word. We'll link that ending sound rather. When a word ends in a vowel or diphthong plus T and the next word begins with a vowel or diphthong, just like up here with lot of, we so often flap that T. Every once in a while we don't. I'm emphasizing I. By putting a little break, I'm emphasizing that. I have conver I have these conversations with the people. That I have with people. That I have with people. That I have with people. So even though I don't connect with the flap T, it's still pretty smooth. There's not a big break there. That I have with people. So I have. Have is more stressed, but I is also a little bit longer. That I have with people. That I have with people. Have with people. Have with people. These sounds are all connected. The V right into the W. The TH right into the P. No break here. People. This word can be tough for, for some people. <laughs> people can be tough for people. Okay, so the pronunciation is P, the E as in she vowel in the stressed syllable, and then the dark L, pull, 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 in the unstressed syllable. Uh, a lot of people want to round their lips a little bit. They substitute that in for the dark L. Try to make sure your lips are relaxed for this sound. P, pull, oh, 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 oh. You want the back of the tongue to be doing the work for this sound. People, people, people. Is I'll be like, is I'll be like, is I'll be like. Okay, this is all pretty mumbled. I-S, the word is, has a Z sound, so that links into the next sound. Is I'll be like, so the word I, the words I will contract to I'll, but it's hardly ever pronounced that way. It's almost always reduced to something like all, all, which sounds like A-L-L -L said quickly. All, all, is all, is all, is all, is I'll be like, is I'll be like, is I'll be like, is I'll be like, is I'll be like. Is I'll be like, is I'll be like, is I'll be like, the word B said really quickly. It's almost like there isn't a vowel there. But like, but like, but like, but like, is I'll be like, 
So this is all lower in pitch, a little flatter. It comes across pretty unclear. So we have sets of words like this, strings of words like this in American English that are less clear, certainly less fully pronounced. And that provides contrast with the clearer stressed syllables like I have. And that contrast is important in American English. Well, it'll be like, oh, I read about. Oh, I read about. So here I'm slowing down. I'm speaking really clearly because I'm quoting myself. I'm not just talking. I'm saying something that I had said. When we say I'll be like, like is another way to say she said. So I'll be like is I'll say. Or if you're talking about a woman and you could say, and then she was like, no way. That would be the equivalent of saying, and then she said, no way. So we use the word like sometimes in storytelling as a substitute for said. I'll be like, I'll say, or I said, and she was like, is like saying, and she said. Oh, I read about. Okay, so more clear, longer words, ending D, links into beginning schwa of about. Everything is nice and connected. I do a true T here. Again, I'm speaking more clearly. I'm not just talking. I'm quoting myself. So I have to make it seem different. And that's why it's all a little bit more clear than just normal conversation. Well, is I'll be like, oh, I read about. Well, is I'll be like, oh, I read about. Well, is I'll be like, oh, I read about. Yeah. But I didn't actually read the actual the thing. Actual but I didn't actually read. I put a little break here. Separating thought groups. But I didn't actually read the actual thing. I do that for emphasis. It's funny. I'm talking about reading something, but I didn't read it. I just read one sentence about it, but I didn't actually read, read much longer, the most stressed word there, but I didn't actually read, but I, but I, but I, this is like I was saying before, usually when a word ends in a T and the sound before is a vowel or diphthong, and the next word begins with a vowel or diphthong, we flap that to make a smooth connection. But I, but I, but I. But I, but I, but I. But I didn't actually, didn't actually. It sounds to me like I'm stop, I'm dropping the T. There's no sense of a stop here, didn't actually. So the ending N is linking into the next vowel, nah, nah. Didn't actually, actually. I didn't actually, I didn't actually, I didn't actually, actually, actually. So this word can be four syllables, actually, or it can be three, actually. I think three syllables is a little bit more common. It's a little easier. That's what I've done. Actually. In IPA, I would write it like this. Stress on the first syllable, actually. And then I would probably write that with the schwa, actual e, actually, actually. The ending e links right into the next sound, the consonant r, actually read, actually read. So everything is smoothly connected. I didn't actually read, I didn't actually read, I didn't actually read the actual the thing. Actual. The actual thing. The actual thing. So I'm stressing this quite a bit. I've slowed down the actual thing. Those two syllables have some stress. The word the pronounced with the E vowel. We typically do that when the next word begins with a vowel or diphthong. Otherwise, we pronounce it as the schwa, the. But here it's the. The actual. The actual. And it links right into the next word. The actual thing. The actual the thing. Actual, the actual, actual thing. Actual, the actual, actual thing. Actual about. And as I'm saying that, Laura says, the actual about. I can't quite tell because I'm speaking at the same time, but I think she might be doing a schwa. The actual. That's pretty normal, too. I mean, the rule is if the next word begins with a vowel or diphthong, you pronounce this E as the E vowel. But I've noticed Americans certainly don't always do this. The actual about actual about linking those two words together about about the actual about and then she puts a stop t at the end she does not release that actual thing about actual thing about actual about i read the headline 
I read the headline. Okay, what are the two most stressed syllables there? I read the headline. So the words that are usually the ones that are stressed in a sentence are the nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. And they don't always have equal stress, but those are the words that are content words that are usually the ones that are these longer, more clear words. So everything in this forward thought group is linked together, said very smoothly, always a forward motion of the voice, not choppy at all. I read the headline. I read the headline. The word the pronounced with the schwa, the next sound is a consonant. We do pronounce the H in this word. I read the headline. I read the headline. I read the headline. Or I read the one sentence blurb. Or I read the one sentence. I put a little break here while I'm thinking of what word to say. The word or, this often reduces to er. Er, er. Er, I read. Er, I read. I don't reduce it here. Or, or, I read the... Or, so the word or is the aw as on law sound followed by r when it's not reduced. But the aw sound really changes here. It's not aw, it becomes o, 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 much more closed. The lips round further, the tongue pulls further back in the mouth. Or, or, or. In or, in or, in or, I read the one sentence. Or, I read the one sentence. Or I read the one sentence. Red and one get the most stress there. Everything is linked together. Let me spell out the word one here. This letter is a vowel, but the word, the sounds are this in IPA. These are the sounds. So whenever we're talking about rules like with flap T's or this kind of thing or the pronunciation of the word the, we're never talking about letters. We're always talking about sounds. So the beginning sound of this word is a consonant. That means the rule is this would be pronounced with a schwa, not an E vowel. The one, the one, not the one, the one, the, 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 the one. The one sentence. The one, the one, the one sentence. One sentence. Let's talk about this word for a second. Sentence. What's happening with that T? Sentence. I'm making it a stop T. The rule is when the T is in a sequence of T, schwa, N, that it's a stop T. And that's what I'm doing here. Sent. Stop the air really quickly. Just hold it for a second. Sentence. 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 Other words like this. Mountain. Kitten. Fountain. Curtain. I have a video where I go over this a little bit more in detail. You can search on YouTube, Rachel's English Mountain, and it should come up. Sentence. One sentence. One sentence, one sentence, one sentence, blurb that. So now I say blurb that, and that's one thought group. I'm thinking of exactly what to say. Blurb that, blurb that. So I might normally reduce the word that to the schwa, but I don't here because I'm thinking about what to say, so I'm speaking a little bit more slowly. Blurb that. So that keeps its full a vowel. It does have a stop T. Blurb that, blurb that. So here we have an R, a B, a TH, three consonants in a row. Blurb that. I don't release the B. B is a stop consonant, just like T. The lips come together, that stops the air, and then they release. B, B. But we often don't release stop consonants in conversation, especially when the next sound is another consonant. So my lips come together. I make the B sound blur. But then rather than releasing, I go right into the TH sound blur that blurb that blurb that blurb that blurb that blurb that blurb that. Yeah, that. Yeah. Laura says, yeah, 
up down shape of stress she knows what i'm gonna say she agrees with me she probably does it too yeah fa- yeah fa- yeah facebook posts with the headline facebook posts with the headline facebook posts with the headline so more stress on face and head posts this is a verb and i said that nouns verbs adjectives and adverbs are the words that are usually stressed but not all of them will be stressed every time facebook posts with the headline that would be too much so even content words are sometimes not stressed compared to the stressed words in a sentence facebook posts with the headline so here we have sts i do make all of those sounds posts 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 with the headline facebook posts with the headline with the headline so i said before when we have the same sound at the beginning and ending of one of a word that links together two words that link together that we make one sound so with is usually pronounced with an unvoiced th the is usually pronounced with a voiced th when these two words come together which happens pretty frequently the unvoiced sound wins it's stronger with the with the with the headline with the headline with the with the with the with the so it's like taking the word with and just putting a schwa at the end with a with a with a headline facebook posts with the headline it's with the headline it's with the headline it's with the headline the d sound in head line d just like t just like b is a stop consonant here it's followed by another consonant and when stop consonants are followed by consonants they're very often not released so it's not headline head head d d d we don't release the tongue headline we say headline so we put our tongue up into position for the d we make a quick d sound but rather than releasing we go right into the l sound headline 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 and now the conversation three times. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people is I'll be like, oh, I read about. Yeah. But I didn't actually read the actual the thing. actual about. I read the headline or I read the one sentence blurb that yeah. Facebook posts with the headline. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people is I'll be like, oh, I read about. Yeah. But I didn't actually read the actual the thing. actual about. I read the headline or I read the one sentence blurb that yeah. Facebook posts with the headline. I feel like that's a lot of the conversations that I have with people is I'll be like, oh, I read about. Yeah. But I didn't actually read the actual the thing. actual about. I read the headline or I read the one sentence blurb that yeah. Facebook posts with the headline. Here's another monologue talking about a double date. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner with two friends, a double date. We both got sitters and we got a reservation at Park at 645. I already know what I'm going to get. They have the best French onion soup I've ever had. I don't know how long it takes them to make it, but it's worth every minute. It's gonna be so great to enjoy a nice meal catching up with these friends. And now for that analysis. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner with two friends, a double date. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner. Tonight, I stress that, the time, when this is gonna happen. David and I, a little bit longer. Going out to dinner, go a little bit longer. Din, a little bit longer. With two friends. Two, I stress that, I bring the pitch of my voice up. Two friends, friends a little bit longer. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner with two friends. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner with two friends. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner with two friends. And the rest of the words are said pretty quickly. Please notice the word tonight is pronounced with a schwa in the first syllable. So many people pronounce that too, tonight, today, tomorrow, but they're all t, t, just the t and the schwa, t, tonight, 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 tonight. Tonight, the second T is a stop T because it's followed by a word that begins with a consonant. That would be David. Tonight, David. 
Tonight, David and I are. Tonight, David and I are. Tonight, David and I are. David and I. Now, whenever we have two things that we're putting together with and, it's very common to reduce the word and, which I did. I changed the vowel to the schwa and we drop the D. N. David and I. David and I. And then the N links right into the next word, which is the I as in by diphthong. David and I. David and I. David and I. Are, David and I. Are, David and I. Are. The word R. David and I are. R is more like er. David and I are. David and I are going out. Er, 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 er. Said more quickly. David and I are going out. David and I are going out. David and I are going out. I'm going to put a little bit more length on out as well. Out to dinner. So here we have two T's. And I combine those with just one true T. Out to. Out to. So a stop and then a release. Out to dinner. And the word to is reduced. We use the schwa instead of the oo vowel. So it's not to, it's to. Out to dinner. We are going out to dinner with, are going out to dinner with, are going out to dinner with two friends. The word with said very quickly, with, 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 with. So the th is made very simply here. It's very fast with two, with two. Now here t-w-o is pronounced with the oo vowel, and this word never reduces, unlike this word, which is pronounced with the oo vowel, which almost always reduces, so it's actually the schwa instead of the oo vowel. With two friends, with two friends, with two friends, a double date. A double date. A double date with a stop t. So we have the word a with a schwa, uh, uh. A double date. And in this thought group, these three words are very linked together. We have an unstressed syllable, then a stressed syllable, then an unstressed syllable, and a stressed syllable. Da da, da da. A double date. 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 We both got sitters. We both got sitters. Both and sit are the most stressed word there. Sitters, the double T there is a flap T. That's short for babysitter, someone to watch our kids. We both got sitters. The T and got a stop T. Why? Because the next word begins with a consonant. We both got sitters. We both got sitters. We both got sitters. We both got sitters and we got a reservation at park at 645. And we got a reservation at park at 645. Park, probably the most stressed word in that whole sentence. The word and reduces. Did you hear that? I dropped the T. And we got a reservation at, and we got a reservation at, and we got a reservation at, and we got a reservation and we got a and we got a and we got a dropped the D the T here turned into a flap to connect the words linking right into the schwa gotta and we gotta and we gotta and we gotta those four words are all flatter in pitch they're unstressed and they all link together and we got a reservation the stressed syllable of res is a little bit longer a little bit clear reservation notice the letter s here makes the z sound res z, z. reservation and we got a reservation at park at 645. And we got a reservation at park at 645. And we got a reservation at park at 645. So I have the word at twice. Both times it's reduced. It's not the a vowel, but it's the schwa. And it's a stop t. It park, it park, it's 645. It, 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 it. So it's not at, but it, it, it. Both times it's a stop T because the next word begins with a consonant. Here it's a P, and here it's the S sound. Net park at 645. Net park at 645. Net park at 645. 645. 645. Whenever you're giving a time, it's the end of the time, the last part of the time that's stressed. So 45. If I was going to say, let's say this, then I would say 730, and the final word 30 
would be the most stressed. Here the final word is five, so it's 645. Five being the most stressed. 645. 645. 645. And notice the T in 40 is a flap T. We flap the T if it comes after an R before a vowel. 40. 40. 645. 645. 645. I already know what I'm going to get. I stress the word already the most. I already know what I'm going to get. I already know what I'm going to get. This is a little unusual. I'm stressing it because we haven't even arrived at the restaurant and I've already chosen what I'm gonna eat. So that's why already is coming out the most. Now, this word is normally stressed already. I already know. But sometimes we do stress the first syllable. I already know. I already knew that. I already know. I already know what I'm going to get. I already know what I'm going to get. I already know what I'm going to get. I pronounce this word without an L. Already, already. It's like a, a tighter all as in law vowel. Already, I already know. You can do this as well. I think it simplifies the word for non-native speakers and it's a good little shortcut to that word. Already, already. I already know, I already know, I already know. I think I also make no a little bit longer. Know what I'm, know what I'm, know what I'm. What and I'm both flatter, said faster, not as clear. Flap T connecting the two words. Know what I'm, know what I'm. I already know what I'm going to get. I already know what I'm going to get. I already know what I'm going to get. I definitely could have said what I'm gonna get. Gonna, gonna, gonna. Going to is such a good candidate for getting reduced, gonna, but instead I said going to get, going to get, going, so I did a full O as in no diphthong, going to. Then I made a flap T, and we make a flap T in the word to quite a bit when the sound before is voiced, and here it's the NG sound that is voiced, so rather than saying going to, I said going to going to. So my tongue is in position for the NG. That's the back of the tongue. And then the front of the tongue flaps. Going da, 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 get. Going to get. Stop T at the end of get. Why? Because it's at the end of a thought group. Going to get. Going to get. Going to get. Going to get. They have the best French onion soup I've ever had. Okay, I really stress the word best, don't I? They have the best French onion soup I've ever had, ever. They have the best French onion soup I've ever had. They have the best French onion soup I've ever had. They have the best French onion soup I've ever had. They have the, they have the, they have the. These three words a little less clear, flatter in pitch. And then I bring out the word best and I emphasize the B and I move my head as I say the word to say this is an important word. It is the best. They have the best, they have the best, they have the best French onion soup I've ever had. Soup I've ever had. So I notice I close my lips for the P but I don't really release. Soup, soup. You don't hear that escape of air right into the next word, I've. Soup I've ever had. Soup I've ever had. So there was no release of the P there. Soup, P is a stop consonant. Soup I've ever had. Soup I've ever had. Soup I've ever had. I don't know how long it takes them to make it. I don't know how long it takes them to make it. I don't know how long it takes them to make it. Those are my two longer, most stressed words there. I emphasize the H. I make it a little stronger than normal to bring out the stressed word. Let's look at this phrase. I don't know. There are several ways we can pronounce that. We can say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's the most conversational, the least clear. That's not how I do it. I make it a little bit more clear. I don't know how long it takes them to make it. I don't know how long it takes them to make it. 
I don't know how long it takes them to make it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Don't a little bit longer, the higher stress there, the higher pitch. I don't know. Don't. And a little stop for the T there. I don't know. I don't know. If I didn't make that tiny break, it would sound like this. I don't know. Don't know. But instead, there is a tiny break. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how long it takes them to make it. Them becomes them. How long it takes them to make it. Them, 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 them. I could have dropped the TH sound. That's a common reduction. I didn't, but I did reduce the vowel. Them. How long it takes 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 them to make it. The word to reduced. I keep a true T, but I make a schwa. Takes them to make it. Takes them to make it. So even though the sound before was voiced, I did not make that a flap T. Honestly, it's probably because I was speaking in front of a camera. And even though I don't mean to, I often speak just a little bit more clearly in front of a camera than I do in normal English conversation. It takes them to make it. It takes them to make it. It takes them to make it. To make it short, long, short. To make it stop T at the end because it's the end of my thought group. To make it. To make it to make it but it's worth every minute but it's worth every minute but it's worth every minute my two most stressed words there even though the word minute is one of the most stressed words it still ends in a stop t because it's the end of the thought group but it's worth every minute but it's worth every minute but it's worth every minute but it's but it's but it's these three words said quickly, flap T connecting, but it's, and then I actually say a contraction, even though it's written out here as two words, I definitely reduce that into a contraction, but it's, but it's, but it's, but it's flap T linking the two together, but it's, but it's, but it's, it sounds funny on its own, doesn't it? But it's, but it's, but it's, but it's. However, in the context of the whole sentence where we have that against the longer, more stressed words, it sounds very natural to a native speaker. But it's worth every minute. But it's worth every minute. But it's worth every minute. It's going to be so great to enjoy a nice meal. It's going to be so great to enjoy a nice meal. It's going to be so great to enjoy a nice meal. Okay, we do have a couple of reductions here, don't we? Going to, how did I pronounce that? Gonna. It's going to be so great. It's going to be so great. It's going to be so great. It's going to be so great to enjoy a nice meal. So great to enjoy, to enjoy. So here I don't reduce the vowel in two because it's linking into another vowel. To enjoy, to enjoy, two, two, two. However, it's still said very quickly, very much so unstressed. To enjoy, to enjoy, to enjoy, to enjoy, to enjoy. The first vowel in enjoy is the I vowel, which is unstressed. And unstressed I and schwa sound the same. So if I had made this vowel into the schwa, there would be no definition between these two words. We would lose the word too. So that's why the vowel oo is not changed. It's because of the next sound. Now we have a true T connecting these. Great to enjoy. Great stop. Then release of the true T into the vowel too. Great to. Great to. Great to enjoy. Great to enjoy. Great to enjoy a nice meal catching up with these friends. Nice meal catching up with these friends. I didn't say the word and, did I? I wrote it in here, but I don't hear it at all. A nice meal catching up with these friends. 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 To catch up means to tell each other your news, tell each other what's been going on in your lives. We do this with friends or family that we haven't seen for some time. We catch them up on what has happened since the last time we saw them. Phrasal verb. Catching up with these friends. 
catching up with these friends, catching up with these friends. Up has a little bit more length compared to with these. It has a little bit more height to the pitch, catching up with these friends. So I'm going to give it that little curve so that we know it was a little higher in pitch. Catching up with these, with these, with these, lower in pitch, less clear, and then friends. Catching up with these friends. Catching up with these friends. Catching up with these friends. The word with ends in the unvoiced TH. It can be pronounced voiced, but unvoiced is much more common. The word these is pronounced with a voiced TH. But when we have one word that ends in a consonant and the next word that begins in the consonant, if they're very similar, then they'll link together with one sound. And in this case, it's the unvoiced sound that wins. Unvoiced sounds are considered stronger than voiced sounds. So when S and Z link together, S, the unvoiced sound, wins. When unvoiced TH and voiced TH link together, it's the unvoiced sound that wins. So you can link these together with these, with these, and drop your voiced TH. Just make one unvoiced TH consonant to link the words together. With these, with these, with these, with these, with these, with these friends, with these friends. And now the conversation three times. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner with two friends, a double date. We both got sitters and we got a reservation at park at 645. I already know what I'm going to get. They have the best French onion soup I've ever had. I don't know how long it takes them to make it, but it's worth every minute. It's going to be so great to enjoy a nice meal catching up with these friends. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner with two friends, a double date. We both got sitters and we got a reservation at park at 645. I already know what I'm going to get. They have the best French onion soup I've ever had. I don't know how long it takes them to make it, but it's worth every minute. It's going to be so great to enjoy a nice meal catching up with these friends. Tonight, David and I are going out to dinner with two friends, a double date. We both got sitters and we got a reservation at park at 645. I already know what I'm going to get. They have the best French onion soup I've ever had. I don't know how long it takes them to make it, but it's worth every minute. It's going to be so great to enjoy a nice meal catching up with these friends. Okay, this is a fun scene I made with my friends Vicky and Jay, where we're acting out checking in at an airport. They also have a YouTube channel, Simple English Videos. Be sure to check them out. The machine didn't recognize my passport. I can help. Where are you flying to today? Rio. We're flying to Rio, and then we have a connecting flight to Recife. What are you looking for? My reading glasses. They're on your head. Oh. <clears throat> I had a bottle of water. I threw that away. Why? You can't take liquids on the plane. Oh. Are you checking any bags? Yes, just one. Can you put it on the scale? Sure. Can you check our bag through to Recife? No, I can't. You'll need to pick it up in Rio to go through customs. How much time do we have? How long is our layover? About two and a half hours. That's plenty of time. Here are your boarding passes. Thank you. Your flight leaves from gate 19 and boarding begins at 11.20. 11.20. Have a great trip. We will. And now for that analysis. The machine didn't recognize my passport. Didn't recognize. Did you notice how Jay pronounced the N apostrophe T contraction didn't? He didn't release the T, didn't, but rather ended this word with a nasal stop sound, didn't. Mm, mm, mm. The machine didn't recognize my passport, didn't recognize my passport, didn't recognize my passport. Didn't recognize. This is how we pronounce all N apostrophe T contractions. Mm didn't recognize. I can help. I can help. I can help. I can help. Did you notice how the word can was reduced? K, schwa, n sound. So it sounds like there's no vowel. Kin, kin. I can help. I can help. I can help. I can help. 
This is because can is a helping verb here. It's not the main verb. The main verb is help. Can is usually a helping verb. And in these cases, we do reduce it. I can help. I can help. I can help. Where are you flying to today? Where. I reduced the word R to the schwa R sound er. Er. Where. It linked up with the word before. Where. Where. -er. Where. -er. And just sounds like an extra syllable at the end of where. Where are you flying to today? Where are you flying to today? Where are you flying to today? Where. -er. I pronounced a full oo vowel in the word to, but I reduced the vowel in the word today to the schwa, t, t, today. So this, so this syllable was short and the syllable day was longer, today. What do you notice about the intonation of that question? Where are you flying to today? Where are you flying to today? Where are you flying to today? Today. The pitch went down at the end, but it's a question. Questions that can't be answered with yes or no do go down in pitch at the end, just like phrases. We're flying to Rio, and then we have a connecting flight to Recife. Vicky has pronounced this beautifully in British English. As you know, this is an American English channel, and that's really where my expertise is. I'm not going to comment too much on what Vicky says, except to point out a few differences between British English and American English. What are you looking for? My reading glasses. The first major difference I'll point out is how she pronounced the phrase what are. She made a true T here, and most Americans will make that a flat T. What are? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? I've noticed that people who speak British English tend to make many more true T's than Americans. We like to make more stop teas and flap teas. Water. But Vicky says, What are you looking for? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? What do you notice about the intonation of this question? Looking for. It goes down in pitch at the end because it cannot be answered with yes or no. My reading glasses. My reading glasses. My reading glasses. No reductions in Jay's short sentence, but listen to how the sounds and words all flow together. My reading glasses. My reading glasses. My reading glasses. My reading glasses. One thought with a swell over the stressed syllable read. My reading glasses. All one nice, smooth phrase. My reading glasses. They're on your head. Oh. <clears throat> I had a bottle of water. Jay flapped the double T in bottle so that it sounded like an American D. Bottle, bottle. Also the word water. Vicky probably would have said this with true T's. Bottle and what. T -t -t. True T. Actually, water is an interesting word because it sounds totally different in British English than it does in American English. The vowel is different, the pronunciation of T is different, and the pronunciation of the last two letters is different. I actually have a video on how Americans pronounce the word water. Check it out. I had a bottle of water. I had a bottle of water. I had a bottle of water. I threw that away. Why? Another clear, true T from Vicky, where an American probably would have flapped that. I threw that away. That a, 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 a. I threw that away. But Vicky says, I threw that away. I threw that away. I threw that away. Why? Why? Again, up but then down at the end. Why? This is a question that cannot be answered with yes or no. Why? 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 You can't take liquids on the plane. Oh. Are you checking any bags? Here I pronounce the word R more fully with a vowel. R. R. I wouldn't have to. Even though it's the beginning of a sentence, I could still reduce it to er. Are you checking? But I said R. Are you checking? Are you checking any bags? 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 S smooth connection across the phrase with the stressed syllables check. 
and bags. It's a question. What do you notice about the intonation? Are you checking any bags? This is a yes no question, so the pitch should go up at the end. But actually, I made it so the pitch goes down. Bags. Are you checking any bags? Are you checking any bags? Are you checking any bags? Okay, so the rules aren't perfect. I also could have said this with intonation going up at the end. Are you checking any bags? And in general, it's more polite to make your intonation go up at the end of a yes no question. Are you checking any bags? Yes, just one. Can you put it on the scale? Another can reduction. Can. Can. Why is that? What's the main verb here? The main verb is put. So can is a helping verb. Reduce it. Can you put it on the scale? Can you put it on the scale? Can you put it on the scale? Scale? The intonation does go up at the end of this yes no question. Can you put it on the scale? Can you put it on the scale? And notice my flap T's making this little three word phrase very smooth. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Can you put it on the scale? Can you put it on the scale? Can you put it on the scale? Not true tease, but just flapping the tongue against the roof of the mouth to make the connection between the words smoother. Put it on. Can you put it on the scale? 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 Sure. There are a couple different ways you can pronounce this word. I usually say, sure. Jay said, sure. Both are acceptable. Sure. Can you check our bag through to Recife? Notice Jay reduced can to can. Can you check our bag? What's the main verb here? Can you check our bag through to Recife? The main verb is check. So can is a helping verb, and we want to reduce that. The word to. Jay pronounced that with a flap T and the schwa. This is a common reduction. Thruda, thruda, thruda. Can you check our bag through to Recife? Through to Recife? Through to Recife? No, I can't. You'll need to pick it up in Rio to go through customs. Can't. I did pronounce a strong true T there, didn't I? I was being extra clear. What do you notice about the vowel in the word can't? No, I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. It's a full a、ah、vowel. A.、Ah. Even though we reduce the vowel in the word can often, we do not reduce the vowel in the word can't. I... No, I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. You'll need to pick it up in Rio to go through customs. Reduce the vowel in to to the schwa. You'll need to. You'll need to. Pick it up. You'll need to pick it up in Rio. You'll need to pick it up in Rio. You'll need to pick it up in Rio. What do you notice about the T here? Pick it up. It's a flap T. It comes between two vowels. So I made that sound like the American D sound. Pick it up. Pick it up. You'll need to pick it up in Rio. You'll need to pick it up in Rio. You'll need to pick it up in Rio to go through customs. Again, a reduced vowel in two. Now I could make this T a flap T, but I didn't. I made it a true T, in Rio to. But I could have said in Rio to. You'll need to pick it up in Rio to go through customs. How much time do we have? How long is our layover? What do you notice about the intonation of these two questions? After the phrase peaks on the stress word time, do we have? The last three words are all pretty low in pitch, heading down. How much time do we have? Layover. Both of these phrases, questions but not yes/no questions, go down in pitch. How much time do we have? How long is our layover? How much time do we have? How long is our layover? How much time do we have? How long is our layover? About two and a half hours. That's plenty of time. Did you notice the very clear stop T in about? About two and a half hours. I made a true T for two, but I made a stop T for about. About, stop the air, two and a half hours. This is how you want to pronounce this when one word ends in a T and the next word begins in a T. About two and a half hours. About two and a half hours. About two and a half hours. 
Don't make two T sounds. Just make a stop and then one true T. About two and a half hours. 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 How did I pronounce the word and? I reduced it to just the schwa N sound. Mm. Mm. Two and a half. Notice the L in half is silent. About two and a half hours. About two and a half hours. About two and a half hours. That's plenty of time. Vicky made a nice, clear, true T here. That's plenty of time. That's plenty of time. That's plenty of time. Americans will often drop the T completely when it comes after an N. Actually, we'll see an example of this in just a minute. Here are your boarding passes. Thank you. Here are your boarding passes. I did make a full vowel in the word R, but it was still very fast, very quick. It's a function word. It doesn't need much time. Here are your. Here are your. Here are your boarding passes. Here are your boarding passes. Here are your boarding passes. Thank you. Your flight leaves from gate 19 and boarding begins at 1120. Your flight leaves. The word your was very fast. I reduced it so that it had the schwa R ending. Your, your, your flight. Your flight leaves. Your flight leaves, your flight leaves, your flight leaves from gate 19 and boarding begins at 1120. Flight leaves with a clear stop T, not released. Flight, flight, flight leaves. Your flight leaves, your flight leaves, your flight leaves from gate 19 and boarding begins at 1120. 1120. Here's the example I talked about earlier. Americans often drop the T when it comes after an N. 20 is a perfect example. I did it. 1120, 1120, 1120. 1120. And so did J. 1120. 20. 1120. 1120. 1120. Have a great trip. Great trip. Again, I did not make two T's. One word ended in a T, the next word began in a T, but I didn't repeat the T. Great trip. Have a great trip. Have a great trip. Have a great trip. Trip. The TR consonant cluster can be and often is pronounced as a CHR. Trip, trip, instead of trip, trip. Have a great trip. And now the conversation three times. The machine didn't recognize my passport. I can help. Where are you flying to today? Rio. We're flying to Rio and then we have a connecting flight to Recife. What are you looking for? My reading glasses. They're on your head. Oh. <clears throat> I had a bottle of water. I threw that away. Why? You can't take liquids on the plane. Oh. Are you checking any bags? Yes, just one. Can you put it on the scale? Sure. Can you check our bag through to Recife? No, I can't. You'll need to pick it up in Rio to go through customs. How much time do we have? How long is our layover? About two and a half hours. That's plenty of time. Here are your boarding passes. Thank you. Your flight leaves from gate 19 and boarding begins at 1120. 1120. Have a great trip. We will. The machine didn't recognize my passport. I can help. Where are you flying to today? Rio. Recife. We're flying to Rio and then we have a connecting flight to Recife. What are you looking for? My reading glasses. They're on your head. Oh. <clears throat> I had a bottle of water. I threw that away. Why? You can't take liquids on the plane. Oh. Are you checking any bags? Yes, just one. Can you put it on the scale? Sure. Can you check our bag through to Recife? No, I can't. You'll need to pick it up in Rio to go through customs. How much time do we have? How long is our layover? About two and a half hours. That's plenty of time. Here are your boarding passes. Thank you. Your flight leaves from gate 19 and boarding begins at 1120. 1120. Have a great trip. We will. The machine didn't recognize my passport. I can help. Where are you flying to today? Recife. Rio. 
We're flying to Rio and then we have a connecting flight to Recife. What are you looking for? My reading glasses. They're on your head. Oh. <clears throat> I had a bottle of water. I threw that away. Why? You can't take liquids on the plane. Oh. Are you checking any bags? Yes, just one. Can you put it on the scale? Sure. Can you check our bag through to Recife? No, I can't. You'll need to pick it up in Rio to go through customs. How much time do we have? How long is our layover? About two and a half hours. That's plenty of time. Here are your boarding passes. Thank you. Your flight leaves from gate 19 and boarding begins at 11.20. 11.20? Have a great trip. We will. Now back to a monologue about my free time. One of my favorite things to do with a free day is to ride my bike. Sometimes I'll ride along the Hudson River or in Central Park, and sometimes I'll go visit friends in Brooklyn. And now for that analysis. One of my favorite things to do. One of my favorite. I definitely hear one and fave as being stressed. Of my is very quick, very different than one and fave. Of my, of my, of my, of my, of my. So I'm using the schwa here, and I am giving the V sound of my, of my, of my, of my, of my, but it's very flat and quick. One of my favorite, one of my favorite, one of my favorite. I notice that I'm dropping the middle unstressed syllable in favorite. So it's not favorite, but simply favorite, favorite favorite things and I notice that I am making that a stop T I'm not releasing it I'm going straight into the TH one of my favorite things one of my favorite things to do with a free day one of my favorite things to do with a free day one of my favorite things to do with a free day one of my favorite things to do with a free day so I notice both the words free and day have a lot more length than the others things is a content word it is a noun but it's more generic than free and day. I think that's why I didn't give it as much time. One of my favorite things to do with a free day. One of my favorite things to do with a free day. One of my favorite things to do with a free day. One of my favorite things to do with a free day. I notice with the word to, I am reducing that to the schwa sound. It's not to do, it's to do, to, 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 to do. To do, to do, to do with a free day. Also the article a, uh, of course, is a schwa. Now I pronounce the ending th unvoiced, with a, with a. Sometimes when people link the ending th that is unvoiced into a voiced sound, like the vowel schwa, they will voice it and say with a, with a. But I left that unvoiced with a, with a, with a free day. With a free day, with a free day, with a free day. Is to ride my bike. Ride. Bike. Those were the two longest words in that sentence fragment, is to ride my bike. I notice again, I reduce this to the schwa sound. It's not to, it's to, to, is to, is to, is to, is to ride, is to ride, is to ride my bike, is to ride my bike, is to ride my bike, is to ride my bike. Sometimes I'll ride along the Hudson River. What did you hear as the most stressed syllables there? I'm hearing some, ride, hud, riv. As you practice your own speech, listen to it and make sure that you can pick out stressed syllables in a sentence. If you can't, then they all sound too much the same and we're lacking good rhythmic contrast. So it's always good to study other speech and to note what do you hear as being the longest syllables. Usually it will go along with adjectives, adverbs, nouns and verbs sometimes i'll ride along the hudson river sometimes i'll ride along the hudson river sometimes i'll ride along the hudson river what else do you notice i notice the ending s here is pronounced as a z sometimes i'll ride also did you notice how i pronounced that contraction i didn't say aisle aisle i said all all so it sounded a lot like this word. In fact, it sounded just like this word, all, all. I used the aw as in law vowel, sometimes all. 
Sometimes I'll ride. So I reduced the contraction, which is already a reduction of I will, to all, all, all. Sometimes I'll ride. Sometimes I'll ride. Sometimes I'll ride. Sometimes I'll ride along the Hudson River. The Hudson River. The word the pronounced with the schwa. Sometimes it's pronounced with an E vowel. That would be when the next word begins with a vowel or diphthong. Here it begins with a consonant, the H sound, Hudson, Hudson. So it was a schwa, the Hudson, the Hudson River. The Hudson River, the Hudson River, the Hudson River. Did you notice how the second and unstressed syllable of Hudson was pronounced? It's written with the letter O, but there's the schwa vowel in there. As an unstressed syllable, it's very fast, sn, sn, sn. And when the schwa is followed by the N sound, you don't need to worry about making a separate schwa sound. It gets absorbed by the N. Sn, 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 sn. Hudson, Hudson. The Hudson River, the Hudson River, the Hudson River, or in Central Park. I noticed I did not reduce the word or. That can be reduced to er, er. Hudson River or Central Park. But in this case, I didn't. I said or. Wait, I just realized I missed the word in. Or in Central Park or in Central Park. Do you hear how fast the word in is? Orin, 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 or in Central Park. Central. Stress syllable of central is the first one. Sen, sen. The second syllable has the schwa, troll, troll, troll. Central, central, central. Did you notice I'm making more of a CH sound here instead of a T sound for the T in central? Central, troll, troll. This can happen when the T is followed by an R. In Central, in Central, in Central Park. And sometimes I'll go visit friends in Brooklyn. And sometimes. I definitely dropped the D in that word. And sometimes. And sometimes. Reducing the word and. And sometimes. And sometimes. And sometimes. Let's talk about stress in that last part of the sentence. And sometimes I'll go visit friends in Brooklyn. What did you hear as being the most stressed syllables? Some, sort of but even stronger, viz, friends, brook, verb, noun, noun, the content words. And did you notice the contraction aisle? Again pronounced with the aw as in law vowel, reduced to all, 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 all. And sometimes look, and sometimes look, and sometimes I'll go visit friends in Brooklyn. Also, all of these words, as always in a thought group, were very connected. I had a stop T here in visit, so I didn't bother to release it, which would have made a little gap in my line. Visit friends, visit friends, visit friends, visit friends, visit friends in Brooklyn. Also, the ending Z sound of friends linked into the beginning vowel of the next word. Friends in, friends in, friends in, friends in Brooklyn. Visit friends in Brooklyn. Visit friends in Brooklyn. Visit friends in Brooklyn. And now the conversation three times. One of my favorite things to do with a free day is to ride my bike. Sometimes I'll ride along the Hudson River or in Central Park, and sometimes I'll go visit friends in Brooklyn. One of my favorite things to do with a free day is to ride my bike. Sometimes I'll ride along the Hudson River or in Central Park, and sometimes I'll go visit friends in Brooklyn. One of my favorite things to do with a free day is to ride my bike. Sometimes I'll ride along the Hudson River or in Central Park, and sometimes I'll go visit friends in Brooklyn. And our last one, a monologue about evening plans. Tonight I'm meeting up with some friends in the West Village for pizza. We may stay in the West Village afterwards, or we may hop on our bikes and go up to UCB for a comedy show. And now for that analysis. Tonight I'm meeting up with some friends in the West Village for pizza. We may stay in the West Village afterwards, or we may hop on our bikes and go up to UCB for a comedy show. One of the first things I notice is that I've made this a stop T rather than a flap T. Tonight I'm meeting up with some friends. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Often when the T comes between vowels or diphthongs, in this case we have the I as in by diphthong for tonight and the I as in by diphthong for I. We would make that a flap T to connect, but I made this a stop T so there was a little break in the line. Tonight I'm meeting. Tonight, tonight. Tonight I'm meeting up with some friends. Tonight, 
tonight, tonight. I also noticed that I've made this O a schwa to, 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 tonight. This T, on the other hand, was a flap T, meeting up, meeting up. I did not release the P here, so that's a stop consonant. Up, up, my lips came together to make the P, but rather than releasing them up, I went right into the next word, with. Meeting up with some friends, I'm noticing, sort of to my surprise, that I also dropped the TH. With some friends, with some friends, up with some friends, up with some friends, up with some friends. So I took this function word, which will not be stressed, it is less important in the sentence, and I dropped the final sound. With some, with some, with some, with some friends. In the West Village for pizza. It's very obvious to me there what the most stressed words are. In the West Village for pizza. In the West Village for pizza. In the West Village for pizza. Let's start with the first four words. In the West Village. In the was very quick. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the. West and Village both had more time. West, Village, in the West Village. So even though in the is two words, it was probably faster than the single word West. In the West, in the West Village. In the West Village, in the West Village, in the West Village. And the final two words for pizza for pizza. I definitely hear the first syllable of pizza as being stressed. The word for was reduced. It had the schwa for, 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 for pizza. For pizza. For pizza. For pizza. For pizza. For pizza. In the West Village for pizza. We may stay in the West Village afterwards. Which syllable was the most stressed? We may stay in the West Village afterwards. We may stay in the West Village afterwards. We may stay in the West Village afterwards. I definitely heard stay as being the most stressed. That's our verb. That's a content word which will usually be stressed in a sentence. Again, in the was very quick. West and village were both stressed, as was afterwards, but they had less curve to the voice. They were less stressed to me than the word stay, which was louder. We may stay in the West Village afterwards. I noticed that I did not reduce the word or. That's one word that can reduce to er, 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 or we may, or we may. But here I said, or we may, or we may. I did not reduce the vowel. Or we may hop on our bikes, or we may hop on our bikes, or we may hop on our bikes. We may hop on our bikes. What do you think is the loudest, most stressed word in that sentence fragment? We may hop on our bikes. We may hop on our bikes. We may hop on our bikes. I hear hop. Again, the verb. We may hop on our bikes and go up to UCB. And go up to UCB. I definitely reduce the word and here by dropping the D. And go up to UCB. And go up, and go up, and go up. Again, hear the word up. I did not release the P sound. I made that a stop. Up to, up to. Again, a reduction I did not do. The word to usually has the schwa sound in it. And instead, I left in the vowel oo, to, to. I usually reduce the word to in conversation, to, to, to. I did not do it here because I was talking into the camera. And I've noticed that I do use fewer reductions when I'm recording than I do in normal conversation. To UCB, to UCB, to UCB for a comedy show. For a comedy show. I most definitely reduced this vowel to the schwa, fur, 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 fura, fura. So I also connected that word very much so to the article a, which is also pronounced as the schwa, fura, 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 for a comedy show. For a, for a, for a, for a comedy show. For a comedy show. Let's test your listening skills for stress. The word comedy is a three-syllable word. Which did you hear as being the most stressed? Comedy, comedy, comedy. It's the first syllable. So the last two syllables are lower in pitch and flatter, also maybe a little quieter than the stressed syllable. Midi, 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 midi. Ka, midi, ka, midi. Comedy show. And now the conversation three times. Tonight I'm meeting up with some friends in the West Village for pizza.
We may stay in the West Village afterwards, or we may hop on our bikes and go up to UCB for a comedy show. Tonight I'm meeting up with some friends in the West Village for pizza. We may stay in the West Village afterwards, or we may hop on our bikes and go up to UCB for a comedy show. Tonight I'm meeting up with some friends in the West Village for pizza. We may stay in the West Village afterwards, or we may hop on our bikes and go up to UCB for a comedy show. When you watch so much analysis all at once, you really start to feel those characteristics that are important to American English. You can't deny them. You start to feel them in your body. If you want to start training that, you'll want to work with the audio training that goes along with these kinds of analysis videos in my online school, Rachel's English Academy. We have thousands of students training right now to get these habits into their voices. Visit rachelsenglishacademy.com to sign up today. Keep your learning going now with this video and don't forget to subscribe with notifications. I make new videos on the English language every week. I love being your English teacher. That's it and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.